Because you and I yes. were talking off air, right? And it's I've said this to you before. I've said it mm. to many a sports person that I'm lucky enough to know. That it, when you're in your industry and you look fantastic physically, you've mm. got copious amounts of money and you're famous, it's not normal to be normal. Absolutely. Right? So are you stuck in that bubble at the time? Have you mm-hmm. have you all of a sudden popped out the bubble and looked back and gone, oh my God, who was that? That was me. I didn't even recognise myself. Absolutely. I, I, went, I went on a golf trip with the lads the other day, like two days in, in Malaga. And I was like, oh yeah, we could do that. And even now you're looking at going, oh, we can probably take the kids away in a, in a school holiday instead of having to do it. Again, these are very like trivial things, but it, it's more about the the, the dedication and, and the sacrifice. And, and uh, again, a fan or someone listening can easily go, oh, but you did this and oh, I think that. But to actually live this life for 17 years, day in, day out. Via extra time and penalties. Here is John McGinn down the right for Villa. Still a little bit laboured from the Premier League side. Illustrated by the fact they played the ball all the way out to Martinez when McGinn had it. What, 20 yards outside the little penalty area at one stage? Yeah, the ball has come to Conta a couple of times and he's looking up and he's saying, now do something. I can't just put the ball through the eye of a needle. So he's passed it back three times now to Emi Martinez. Six attempts from Lil Villa. Yet to register a shot of any kind. Martinez clips the ball out to this right-hand side but over the head of everybody in white and out for a little throw and the moment's got me into the seeing out the four added minutes pretty comfortably. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's not as if Lille are creating chances but just they're not been able to handle the Lille press. It's, uh, four times it went back to Martinez there for Conzo and then just tried to play the ball out to Matty Cash and overhit it and gave the ball back to Lille. Yeah, I guess that's the, the positive that Unai Emery will take for it, despite the fact that his side have been completely outplayed in this first half, apart from the goal. Maybe the one where he had to save his face, Martinez, hasn't been overworked either. 90 seconds to stop his time to play. Lille 1, Villa 0, here on Talk Sport 2. 2-2 two, two on aggregate. Martinez, the Villa goalkeeper, plays the ball out with his right-hand side in cash. But again, Lille doing a really good job of keeping Villa penned inside their own final third. It's back with Martinez inside the six-yard box. Again, I'm not sure that Pau Torres really wanted it, but he does play it forward down the left to Digne. Digne, with room to run into on that far side, plays it forward, looking for Rogers. Bentelev in there, and he clears it out for a Villa throw. Well, it was better from Villa, and Martinez played it to Pau Torres, who then was able to get it out to Luca Digne, and, and then he could run up the pitch 30, 40 yards. You know, it's about having courage in these situations. It's a really hostile atmosphere against a very good side, and we said they would be at the start of the game. I've just not been able to live up to them at the moment, Aston Villa, which has surprised me. We've got an opportunity, though, with the throw. Launched into the area by Digne. Over the head of Watkins. Might come for Douglas Louise. He's followed it over the crossbar. The whistle had gone for a foul anyway. It's a little free kick, and that probably will be the last action of the half. Well, look, it's a, it's a long throw into the box, not dealt with. Saying that Ollie Watkins fouled in the box. Well, I suppose it's clumsy more than anything. Douglas Louise has come off the side of his foot and gone straight over anyway. But again, you know, the positives are there's there's half a chance there, they're, they're in the right end of the pitch. But it hasn't been a good first half for Master Villa. Big half time team talk for Unai Emery to come because the whistle has blown. Aston Villa's 2-1 lead from the first leg, swept away inside 15 minutes. Yusuf Yazayur, the Turkish midfielder, with an emphatic finish from just inside the area. Emi Martinez, by far the busier of the top two goalkeepers. He made one extraordinary save with his face and may well still be feeling the effects of that. But Scott Minto, a first half to forget as far as Aston Villa are concerned. Well, the stats are still suggesting they've not had a shot on or off target. And I think that pretty much sums up Villa, yes, they've had 63% possession, but I mean, I wonder how much Emi Martinez have had, has had of that because the ball's just continually gone back to him. When he's tried to play the ball out in, in the sort of short passing, it's not happened for him. He's played the ball out. When he's tried to play the ball long, not been able to hold the ball up, and, and Lille have come again. As you say, you know, yeah, okay, they haven't created lots of chances, Lille, but they, they've scored one. They, I mean, Martinez made a really good save with his face, and if anything, at this moment in time, with what we've seen in the first half, if someone said to you, who do you think is going to go on and win this, it wouldn't be Aston Villa. Well, Aston Villa with work to do. They were 2-0 up at one stage in this tie. They are back to all square. 
a huge 45 minutes to come. Half time here on Talksport 2. It is Lille 1, Aston Villa 0. Europa Conference League Live, TalkSport 2, with Village Hotels. With 33 locations across the UK, Village Hotels have everything under one roof for a great breakaway. Hello, Tom Skinner here, literally to drill through the clutter with some fantastic birthday news from DeWalt. To celebrate an amazing 100 years of the cutting edge of power tools, DeWalt have launched their most compact 18-volt XR hammer drill ever, the limited edition DCD100. It's certainly got bags of wallop, the new DeWalt DCD100. It's grey, it's compact, and it's got up to 68 newton metres of torque. In fact, the Wall was so excited about innovating for a century, they're giving away 100 birthday prizes, including power tools, and even this year, brand spanking new full range of wild track pickup. To enter, buy a DCD100 drill kit from any UK DeWalt retailer before the 12th of June and register online. Easy. The new limited edition DeWalt DCD100 hammer drill. Tough, rugged, and one of a kind. Like me. <laughs> 18 plus, see thewalt.co.uk for terms and conditions. I can be yours, radiant. I'm waiting for you to feel me in every room you so desire. I would love to spend time with you in a steamy, hot shower. And if you take good care of me, I'll stay as hot as the day we first met. <clears throat> feel the love with a high-efficiency heat pump from My Dear. Now available with a government grant of £7,500 and 10-year warranty. Terms of property suitability apply. Visit mydearuk.co.uk. Not everything in golf makes sense, but buying pre-owned clubs does. We're Golf Better, an official partner of the PGA that helped millions of golfers over the last 25 years find quality and affordable clubs to improve their game. So while you may not always trust your swing, you can trust our clubs. Golf is difficult. Buying great value pre-owned clubs isn't. Browse thousands of premium clubs and use code TALKSPORT5 for 5% off at golfbidder.co.uk. TALKSPORT2 is your dynamic destination for all the latest sporting action. Featuring live commentary of all the biggest events, including football, PGA golf, horse racing, premiership rugby, cricket, boxing, and all the big hitting drama of the NFL. Touchdown! Plus, TalkSport 2's official betting partner, William Hill, is always on hand with the insight and in-depth analysis you need. TalkSport 2 with official betting partner, William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. TalkSport 2. Traffic and travel. Sorry, the M23 northbound is still partly blocked after a collision between Junction 9 at Gatwick Airport and Junction 8 for the M25. In Buckingham, show the M40 northbound is partly blocked by a breakdown. It's just after Junction 4 for High Wycombe and the A404. And in Derby, show the M1 northbound is partly blocked. There's a breakdown there just by Junction 28, a turn off for Mansfield and the A38. So do expect some queues and delays on the approach. I'm Adam Moore. This game on coming this summer. Hear unrivaled coverage of UEFA Euro 2024 live on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Unbelievable. The biggest football tournament in Europe, driven by the passion and prowess of the world's biggest sports radio station. Oh! Broadcasting unmissable output, 24 hours a day, seven days a week throughout the entire tournament. What a magnificent finish! You wait for Euro 2024 Germany, coming soon to TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Passion, heartbreak, glory, despair, triumph. Fantastic strike! The Europa Conference League Live. Brilliant reaction. On TalkSport 2. In comes the corner, swung in deep, oh, Boniface, it's two, now, they've got so much to do, because they're going to have to overturn a two-goal deficit against the side who haven't been beaten since May. Tough assignment, but listen, anything can happen when you go back to West Ham. Listen, there's still a chance, still got you believe you're a West Ham fan. 2 is not an unassailable position. So West Ham can lay a glove on them. They, you know, they have been successful in all of their home games. This is a different level of opposition. I think you've got to go through all the process to get there. We have to go through the process and it'll be a difficult, difficult game, but something which we will good belief that we can find a way to try and make it. And the West Ham fans believe again around the London Stadium. 
You are listening to Europa Conference League live on Talk Sport 2. We're at half time. It's Lille 1, Aston Villa Neil. So back to 2 2 on aggregate. We'll have full second half commentary to come. But following us, we're live from the London Stadium as West Ham look to overturn a two goal deficit against the Bundesliga champions Bayer Leverkusen in their Europa League quarter final second leg. Adam Bridge will be alongside the former Hammers boss Alan Pardew and they join us now to look ahead to tonight's action. Yeah, evening Alex, evening everyone. A lovely night here in London at London Stadium. Plenty of tension around as well as the fans start to fill in for what could be a memorable night for West Ham United. A third consecutive season in Europe, of course, semi-finalists in the Europa League two years ago, conference winners last season. And here they stand in a quarter-final uh, against Europe's side this year, unbeaten in 43 games in all competitions by Leverkusen. They have a 2-0 advantage from that first leg. 82 minutes, West Ham, the game plan worked perfectly. The last eight, maybe not so. Uh, the former West Ham boss, Alan Pardew, is alongside me. Alan, there's kind of mixed moods downstairs in the in the press room and amongst the supporters some are saying it's a lost cause others like myself carry some hope that they can turn this one around because they've been behind in games like this and done it before well uh, firstly good evening to everybody i mean this is a this is a this is a game where the first goal is everything and uh david's pre-match talk david moore is about keeping it tight and you know not going gung-ho is very much around that process because you've got to set your team your team up to make sure you're in the game uh, but making sure you do not concede the first goal be essential tonight particularly against this team who are obviously German champions unbeaten uh, the invincibles of Germany so far which they they might get over the line uh, and, and I'm beating in every competition. It's a, it's a privilege to actually see them tonight. I'm looking forward to uh, Bayer Leverkusen coming to the Premier League and, sh and showing what they've got. Uh, for West Ham, of course, um, they're going to need to get the stadium behind them. And uh, that's why the first goal uh, will be essential for them. That's one of the things. The record here in these Euro European competitions is exceptionally good. They did lose in the semi-final two years ago to Frankfurt here uh, on the night 2-1. And, th and they have that capacity to get to get caught cold sometimes. Is it a worry the form they're in? Because they've not been in great nick since the turn of the year, West Ham. Well, I was here for the last European game and obviously they were terrific. It was probably the performance of the season. They, they, I couldn't be, believe how good actually West Ham were that night. And that's what the performance they need tonight. You need everybody at it. You need your management, your staff, everybody keyed and focused. Not like that press room downstairs where everyone's like a bit jittery and thinking, oh, it's not going to happen. And have you seen the odds and, you know, whatever. So I think positivity is, is, a, is a major thing in football and momentum is important. And I think getting the ball off this team uh, with Pacata not playing tonight, that might help West Ham because they're going to need a lot of energy to try and get win this ball back because they they retain the ball so so well Bayer Leverkusen and that's that's going to be one of the issues for David to get enough possession to, to hurt them yeah no Pakatar no Emerson of course both uh, suspended Alvarez does return we await official team news on Jared Bowen who David Moore has reported yesterday uh, is back training again when you are on the kind of run that Bayer Leverkusen are on I mean, the mentality going into these kind of... Do you feel invincible? Is it, as a group of players, do you feel like, actually, whatever's thrown us, no one can touch us? Well, you're talking to a manager who probably only had a run of about 10 games like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think at Reading, actually, we went on a, an amazing run, uh, about 20, 30 games or something. But, you know, this is unprecedented, really, uh, particularly for a, for a club who actually are like West Ham in, in the Bundesliga. They're not a big, big club. Uh, so to do what they've done is is exceptional and, and the, the wing back system is is something that they've got now down and that'll be interesting to see how David sets up against that but it's a, it's, it is a kind of confidence thing once you get on a roll like this and momentum and you hear great managers of Alex Ferguson of course and talking about it momentum's a massive tool for a football manager you can't put your finger on it you don't actually know how it evolves it just arrives and it and it's obviously arrived for Bayer Leverkusen and and their red hot favorites tonight well if West Ham are going to do this they're going to have to beat the unbeatable it could be one of the biggest nights in European football here at the London Stadium if they can turn this one round kickoff is set for eight o'clock Alan Pardew will be alongside me we'll have the team news for you in the next 15 minutes or so but we can't wait London Stadium eight o'clock tonight for West Ham against Bayer Leverkusen
And that game will be live here on Talk Sport. So a reminder over on Talk Sport, we bring you Liverpool's trip to Atalanta, when of course Jurgen Klopp's side have an even bigger task than the Hammers. They are 3 0 down from the first leg. And what about Aston Villa then? They were 2 0 up at one stage in their Conference League quarter final, but Lille have got it back to 2 2. They lead by a goal to nil on the night. Here's how the first half sounded on Talk Sport 2. Can Aston Villa book their first European semi-final since they were crowned European champions way back in 1982? Out to the left-hand side this time of Goodmundson, who crosses into the area! And Aston Villa are behind! And this terrible week for Premier League teams in Europe threatens to continue. And I'll tell you what, that's the worst possible start for Aston Villa. And here's Haraldson with a corner. Oh, that was a free header, and it's nodded wide by Benjamin Andre. Yes, the chastening first half for Aston Villa in northern France on a single shot on or off target. They trail by a goal to nil, 2-2 on aggregate. If that was to remain the score after 90 minutes, we'll be heading for extra time and penalties. If Lille were to score again, they'd be ahead for the first time in the tie. Aston Villa bidding to get the goal to bring them level on the night and give them the advantage in that race for a semi-final place. Just a reminder of all of the live football we have coming your way over the course of a bumper weekend on the TalkSport Network. Saturday, 12.30, massive game in the Championship. Leicester City bidding to get back to the Premier League. They host a playoff chasing West Bromwich Albion. Uh, that's live on Talk Sport here on Talk Sport 2 at the same time Barcelona Chelsea in the first leg of the Women's Champions League semi-final Emma Hayes bidding to win at the only trophy she's not yet managed to lift as Chelsea manager at three o'clock on Talk Sport 2 our live and exclusive commentary is Sheffield United against Burnley from the Premier League at the same time Adrian Durham will be going around the grounds uh, in the Premier League uh, and the EFL 5.15 on Saturday tea time, Chelsea against Manchester City, the first of the FA Cup semi-finals. That's live on Talk Sport at 7:30 on Talk Sport. Wolves take on Arsenal in the Premier League, and on Sunday, Blackburn Sheffield Wednesday is a 12:30 kickoff on Talk Sport two in the Championship, and then it's FA Cup semi-final time once again 3:30 on Talk Sport. Coventry against Manchester United. What a weekend in store! What a night it could be if West Ham can come back from the dead at London Stadium. Adam Bridge has the team news. Yeah, the West Ham team news led by the fact that Jared Bowen is fit and he starts for West Ham United. That's one of three changes. He's missed the last two games, of course, including the first leg uh, last week over in Germany. Mavropanos misses out through injury. Emerson and Pakatara suspended. It's Bowen, Alvarez and Aguirre that come into the starting eleven for West Ham United. And a reminder, once again, that game will be live here on TalkSport 2 once we're finished in Lille at Lille 1 Aston Villa nil on the night 2-2 on aggregate as the Aston Villa players come back out onto the pitch what will Unai Emery have been saying at half time Scott Minto well he certainly won't be happy with what they've been doing with and without the ball I think I think we've just seen that Pala Fonseca is a is a very progressive coach who his attention to detail and the way he gets his team to play I think we might well be seeing him in the Premier League at some time in the future. And look, Emery did a job on Mikel Arteta at the weekend. At the moment, Fonseca's doing the job on Emery. And, you know, I would want the Aston Villa players to be, be have, just to have a bit more courage on the ball. The, the pressing and, and where Lille are wanting Aston Villa to go. They're letting Lemmy Martinez have the ball and sometimes the centre-halves. And the moment they pass it to the side or or just a little bit forward, then the press. And they're, they're not able to handle that at the moment. I want to see the Villa midfield. You know, just say, look, I don't care if someone's on the back of me. Give me the ball, and I will play one touch passing. And there was that one moment, wasn't there, where they made about seven or eight passes. Matty Cash had a, an opportunity. I think it was just offside in the end. They need to do much more of that, be a little bit more courageous. Because at the moment, the best thing I can hope for after that first half is penalties. Well, it will be Aston Villa to get us back underway. All in white, attacking the goal away to our left. Lille in red jerseys, black shorts, black socks. Shooting from left to right, no change in personnel, so Villa have Martinez in goal, Cash, Conta, Torres and Dina the back form. Again, Douglas Luiz and Tillemans in midfield, Diaby and Rogers either side of Watkins out front straight away. Villa go back uh, for their goalkeeper, Martinez. He scoops it out to the right-hand side, but Cash had an awful lot to do to keep that ball in play. 
They are back in possession now, Villa with Conta on the edge of his own penalty area. But Tillemans has given the ball away and almost a second goal for Lille right at the start of the second half. Around him with a shot from the edge of the area, not too far wide. That would have been a catastrophe for Aston Villa. Absolutely. And look, the idea is right. You're, you're, you're wanting your midfield to receive it from the, the centre-backs. They have to. You can't keep on knocking it long or just giving it back to Martinez all the time. Really poor touch, though, from Tielemans. You know, he's got to do better there. He's got to protect the ball. He's almost like looking up and uh, before he, he's been able to get the ball down. And again, I think it shows exactly how tough Villa have found it in that first half. Martinez did go long straight from the restart. It was actually headed back into his own area by Bafude Diakite. Man who scored his first European goal right at the end of the game at Villa Park to get Lille back in the tie and cushion the ball there. Back to the goalkeeper, Chevalier. To back four for Lille of Santos, Yoro, Diakite and Ismaili. Andre and Bentaleb both have been booked in front of them. The goal scorer, Yazier, alongside Haraldson and Goodmanson. We're in behind Jonathan David up front. We haven't seen much of Lille's number nine so far. Villa have done a good job in keeping him quiet. But Lille haven't needed him. They lead 1-0. We've played two minutes in the second half. You're listening to Talk Sport 2, the first of two live European commentaries here this evening. West Ham against Bayer Leverkusen to come over on Talk Sport. We'll have Atalanta against Liverpool at 8 o'clock as well. Here's the captain, Andre. It's a right footy cross, high over the bar. Just got a bit excited. Martinez watched it all the way, and it'll be a goal kick for Aston Villa. But again, Lille, very much the dominant force, Scott Minto, at the start of this second half, as they were for much of the first. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it wasn't for that first sort of four or five minutes. It was all Lille in the first half. We're still waiting for a first attempt at goal, on or off target, from Aston Villa. As I say... I think it's showing how well coached that Lille are, that, that giving Villa problems and Martinez now is just kicking the ball long from a goal kick. Yeah, Watkins trying to meet it but can't get there. It's picked up in the centre circle by Yuri Tillemans. He was almost dispossessed by Andre but managed to usher it back into his own half and Torres. Now Martinez again as the wolf whistles continue every time the Argentine gets a touch of the ball. Torres trying to play it forward. Neat little flick by Watkins, dropping very deep, and the right idea from Rogers as he tried to set the RB away, but couldn't quite get enough meat on the pass. Yeah. It's intercepted by Diakito. He's got to go longer there. You know, Diaby, we know how quick he is, and it was actually again good passing from Aston Villa to, to get the Richards into that position. And when you are in that position, you, you've got to make that pass, telling them. Nil one, Villa nil, two two on aggregate. So. Nothing to separate them at this moment in time. Lille have only lost five of their last 33 games in all competitions. And they've maintained their record tonight of scoring in all 21 games they've played at home. That early goal from Yazir really knocking the stuffing out of Aston Villa. And Lille have been able to control proceedings pretty much since then. And they're coming forward again down the left-hand side. But it's a sign of frustration there from Ismaili that he couldn't keep it in play. It will be a throw in for Aston Villa. You haven't booked your show for Jim and Rolls Royce to pick you up <laughs> after 90 minutes of your cookie because I think we could be here longer. Well, I did speak to Jim White and Simon Jordan earlier. They asked me for a prediction. I said, I think Villa will go through, but I think it could be a long, long yeah, night. I heard At the you. moment, I'm not particularly convinced about the first part of that no, prediction. I agree. Andre knocking the ball into Thiago Santos. He stretches his legs and looks to sprint away from Douglas Luiz. He's been a real handful. He's away from Luiz and it took Lugadinha coming in to make the challenge he's played it against Thiago Santos and Villa have a throw level with their own penalty area five minutes gone in the second half and no real sign of a Villa comeback oh and it's a conversation to have for a, another day and Villa look still very much in this tie of course they are but it could be a horrendous week for English football I just wonder if the competitive nature of the Premier League compared to a lot of other major leagues in and around Europe has had an impact in that I think it has for Liverpool. I think Arsenal were perhaps still a couple of years away from learning what it's like to be play against the real big boys in the deep end of the Champions League. I think City were unlucky. They were the better side and Real Madrid were almost playing for penalties. But West certainly the fact that Villa had to go to Arsenal at the weekend and Lille had a, a free hit at the weekend, didn't play, I think it's made a massive impact on this game. They look fresher, don't they, Lille? Of, of that, there's no doubt. But still, you know, when you come up, up against a... Not just a really good win, but a really good performance. Mentally, your, your, your mind still takes your body where, you know, otherwise it might be tired. But 
They certainly looked tired after the first five minutes, Aston Villa. I think it's all down to the, the tactics and the execution of that from Lille, both with and without the ball. Not seen Villa going forward at all. Six minutes go on the second half. Lille one, Villa nil. Here comes Goodmanson down the left-hand side for Lille. He's just grappling there with Matty Cash. And in the end, the referee has awarded a free kick inside the box to Aston Villa. Just looking at the options on the bench, Morgan Rogers having to come on early because of the injury to Zaniolo. You'd expect to see Leon Bailey at some point, maybe John Duran as well, but there aren't too many more options available to Unai Emery. They've got four academy players in Iro Banam, Kessler Hayden, Munro, and Kellerman amongst their subs. The squad at this stage is stretched the limit as far as Villa are concerned. And there's a balance between, you know, youngsters who sort of have no fear and but this is a real big European game for, for Villa and you need people who are experienced in these situations. Morgan Rogers has done well there. Neat footwork and then releases Luca Dina down by the left corner flag. Dina with a cross over the head of Diaby at the near post and didn't quite have enough purchase to find McGinn. The goalkeeper Chevalier collects it cleanly and then bowls it out to the left-hand side where Goodmanson will come forward. Lille fans continuing to dominate the atmosphere as well. Real football mad plays this as the ball is chipped forward by Thiago Santos. Too much on that. Collected by Martinez and out come the boos again. Lille 1, Villa nil. 2-2 two, two on aggregate. We've played 52 minutes here on Talk Sport 2. Martinez not in any particular rush to get it forward on this occasion. He's still got the ball just on the edge of the D. Knocks it out to the left-hand side and Pau Torres. Now Dina. Back on his old stomping ground, tries to cut the ball back for Watkins dropping deep, but it's been intercepted. And here's Jonathan David racing towards the penalty area, knocks it out wide, across from Haraldson, blocked by a combination of Torres and Douglas Luiz. Torres still being put under pressure by David, but he will clear left footed, didn't get a lot of distance on it though. Santos keeps it in play, and the noise level goes up again inside the Stad Pierre Mauá. With 53 on the clock now. They just look much more dangerous when they do get the turnover of possession, Lille. Here's Haraldson again. David flicks it on the edge of the penalty area. He might get it back here, Jonathan David. He was offside, was he? Well, Villa are appealing for that. And the end, Bentaleb smashes it over the bar. And I think the referee has given the free kick anyway. I don't know why the shot didn't come in in the first place. Haraldson was, what, on the edge of the box, right in front of the goal. Just, just have a shot. And David, David had just gone offside, he was half a yard offside, but I mean, it, it, it's Groundhog Day when we've seen it. We're just literally a minute ago, Villa trying to play out and they're waiting, Lille, they're waiting for Martinez to play the ball. He goes to a centre half, then the moment he plays that ball, if he plays out wide, they're, they're, they're cutting off the space. Look at Dinya gives the ball away and suddenly Lille are going on the attack. I think there's a worry for the Aston Villa fans inside the stadium and those listening at home as well is that. If Lille do get a second goal, I'm just not convinced that Villa have it in them at this moment in time to get on the score sheet. Certainly they've not threatened it so far. We're still waiting for that shot on or off goal. Ball played back to Martinez. Closed down quickly by Aralta, but he's unflustered. The Argentine with the ball at his feet. He plays it out to Contra in the yellow footwear. I mean, I was slightly surprised that Liam Bailey wasn't starting ahead of Diaby. I think Bailey has been... Kickoff on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Celebrate an amazing 100 years of the cutting edge of power tools. DeWalt have launched their most compact 18-volt XR hammer drill ever. The limited edition DCD100. It's certainly got bags of wallop. The new DeWalt DCD100. It's grey, it's compact, and it's got up to 68 newton metres of torque. In fact, the world was so excited about innovating for a century, they're giving away 100 birthday prizes, including power tools, and even this year, brand spanking new full range of wild track pickup. To enter, buy a DCD100 drill kit from any UK DeWalt retailer before the 12th of June and register online. Easy. The new limited edition DeWalt DCD100 hammer drill. Tough, rugged, and one of a kind. Like me. <laughs> 18 plus, see thewalt.co.uk for terms and conditions. In sport, what's just as important as the goals, the glory, the roar of the crowd? Yes, it's the half-time break. 
time for a breather, a reset to keep everything on track. In sports betting, Betfair's safer gambling tools help you do that too. Like timeouts, so you take that all-important half-time break. Or deposit limits to help you keep count. Manage your play at safergambling.betfair.com. Simple ways to stay on top of your game with Betfair. 18 plus be gamblerware.org. Get three pieces of original recipe chicken, fries and your choice of side for just $4.49 at KFC. That's a serious size meal for a seriously small price. The original recipe deal for just $4.49. Do the deal until the 28th of April only at KFC. Participating restaurants only. T's and C's apply. Did you know that you can sell your car to We Buy Any Car even if it has outstanding finance? Just bring along your final settlement agreement and We Buy Any Car will sort it all out for you. Say so long to that saloon and tell that hatchback to hit the road. Just sold my car to We Buy Any Car. Just sold my car. To find out how much your car's worth in 30 seconds, enter your reg number now at webuyanycar.com. Admin fee may apply. For more information, visit webuyanycar.com slash info. Get set to prove your undying loyalty for your club and win when we play football fans forever. Every Friday on TalkSport with three. Register to play now at talksport.com slash win and you can bag some amazing prizes thanks to TalkSport and three. Play football fans forever every Friday at Drive from four on TalkSport with three's rewards app, three plus. Download it now and treat yourself to top offers from the UK's biggest brands. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave, online, on your mobile and on your smart speaker. Talk sport. Talk sport. For the latest headlines, I'm Jeremy Lieburn. Villa are currently 1-0 down at Lille in the second leg of the Europa Conference League quarter-final. It looks like the, it locks the side, sorry, at 2-2 on aggregate so far. There's live commentary right now over on TalkSport 2. There's around 35 minutes plus stoppages to go. Following hot on the heels, but here over on TalkSport with an 8 o'clock kickoff, Liverpool will be looking to channel the miracle of Istanbul as they bid to overturn a 3-0 first league deficit away at Atalanta in the second leg of their Europa League quarter-final. Also in the Europa League, but back over on TalkSport 2, I hope you're staying with me, it's West Ham who'll be looking to turn around a 2-0 aggregate score at home to new German champions Bayer Leverkusen. And EFL Chief Executive Trevor Birch says the decision to scrap FA Cup replays from next season is frustrating and disappointing and has confirmed he'll be seeking compensation for league clubs. Talk Sport News. The husband of Scotland's former First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has been arrested for a second time over an inquiry into SNP finances. And scientists believe they've made a breakthrough treating some forms of leukaemia. Talk Sport weather with Quick Fit. Sort your new tyres this spring at a time that suits you best from the comfort of your home or work seven days a week with our mobile tyre fitting service. Conditions apply. A cloudy night in store for most of us with rain gradually moving southwards. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker. Oh, what a finish! The Europa League live on Talk Sport. It's another huge night of European football across the TalkSport network. We've had a topsy-turvy Tuesday, a tight and tense Wednesday, and strap yourselves in for a Thursday night that is all about the comeback. Xavi Alonso to take it. Up he stands, it's safe, full it up, Tomo corner. it's unbelievable. AC Milan, three, Liverpool, three. And the miracle is 11 minutes away from fruition. It is 4-0 to Liverpool. Remember that I said, if we fail, then let's fail in the most beautiful way. And that's exactly how I see it again. I think we'll see Liverpool go 100 miles an hour from minute one and take a huge risk and just try and score the first goal. So we could see chaos. Six minutes to go. West Ham United 2, Sevilla nil. It's 2-1 to West Ham on aggregate. And you couldn't write it. He blew the whistle. Oh, he has. Listen to the London Stadium in Rock like you've never heard this place in Rock before. 
You have to say we went to Leverkusen and it got to what eighty third minute before they scored the first goal. No, it might take us that long before we can do it, but we have to we have to have that patience and that level of trying to find a way of winning the game. Well, it's been a terrible week for English clubs in continental competition, but it's not over yet. It's going to take a Herculean effort tonight to rescue the situation, though, as we head into the Europa League quarter-final second legs. Liverpool outclassed by Atalanta at Anfield. They need to overcome a three-goal deficit in Bergamo. West Ham returned to East London two goals down, but it could have been worse at Bayer Leverkusen. If it's going to be England tonight, we'll have to do it against all odds right here on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Good evening, Hugh Wizencroft with you inside the London Stadium on what could be a stunning evening of shocks, or at least I hope it's going to be. It might be a couple of limp exits, to be perfectly frank. The one English team that brought a lead into tonight was Aston Villa. They won their home leg against Lille 2-1 in the Europa Conference League quarter-final first leg. It's currently Lille 1, Aston Villa 0 in the second leg at level 2 all on aggregate. That is live for you over on TalkSport 2 right now. But our commentary here on TalkSport tonight, even though I'm at the London Stadium, is going to be Atalanta versus Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp hasn't given up hope of overturning the three-goal defeat at Anfield last week. Defeat to Crystal Palace in the league at the weekend won't have really helped build confidence, though, ahead of this trip to Bergamo. Let's get the team news. Joe Shannon, good evening. Good evening, Hugh. Good evening, everyone. If anyone can do it, given their rich European history, you feel that it might be Liverpool on what could be Jurgen Klopp's last European game in charge of the club. Of course, if they can recover from this 3-0 deficit, then not only will hopes of a treble still be alive and that hope of a treble appears to be rapidly fading now for Liverpool, but it would be one of their most remarkable comebacks, even given, as I say, their storied history in European competition. It's as strong a Liverpool side as is possible realistically. Three changes after the Premier League defeat to Crystal Palace at Anfield. Trent Alexander-Arnold finally makes that long-awaited first start since February the 10th after recovering from his knee injury. He did come off the bench at the weekend. So Boslai and Gakpo, the other two, to come in for Liverpool. Endo and Nunez drop to the bench. Connor Bradley is out injured. Diego Jota only fit for a spot among the subs. Allison is the goalkeeper. Alexander-Arnold, Canate, Van Dijk and Robertson are the defenders. McAllister, Saboslai and Jones in midfield. Salah and Diaz either side of Gakpo up front. For Atalanta, there are two changes from that famous first leg win at Anfield. One of the great results in all of Atalanta history. Formerly of Arsenal, Kolasinac comes back in, as does Alexi Miranchuk in what is a slightly more defensive outlook for the Italians, and that is unsurprising, even despite their 3-0 aggregate advantage. The Ketelaire and Pasalic, who scored the third last week, are the two players to drop out. Musso is the goalkeeper. Jim City, Hien and Kolasinac are the defenders. Zappacosta and Ruggeri are the wing-backs. Edison and Daron in midfield with Kope Meines, the Dutchman, in behind Gianluca Scamacca, who scored a brace, the former West Ham man, this time last week, and Miranchuk up front. Oh, thank you very much. We'll be back to examine those lineups very shortly, but as I mentioned, we're at the London Stadium, West Ham hoping to over- overturn that two-goal deficit against the newly crowned Bundesliga champions, Bayer Leverkusen. They will be hoping that Xavi Alonso's players have had one too many stein of beer this weekend. Because Adam Bridge has your teams and it will be a difficult evening. Yeah, it certainly will, Hugh. Good evening, everyone. Can they defeat the undefeatable? They're going to need to if they want to progress to the semi-finals of the Europa League this evening. 43 games unbeaten for Bayer Leverkusen, including that 2-0 win in the first leg last Thursday night over in Germany. But West Ham have history of turning over deficits heading into second legs. Tonight could be a monumental night. And they'll do it with the help of Jared Bowen. David Moyes confirmed yesterday he was back training he does start tonight for West Ham that's one of three changes from the side which played in Germany last week Emerson and Pakatar of course are suspended so they drop out and Mavropanos looks to have picked up an injury so it's Bowen Alvarez and Aguer that comes into the starting 11 so it's Fabianski in goal Sufal, Zuma, Aguer and Cresswell across the back Alvarez, Socek and Ward-Prowse in central midfield with Bowen on the right Kudus on the left and Mikel Antonio will lead the line for West Ham United 
indeed by Leverkusen. So many riches at the disposal. Three changes from the side which were victorious last weekend and plenty of those players got rest on Sunday in that uh, title-winning victory over Werder Bremen. Adley, Frimpong and Tabsoba are the players that drop out from last Thursday. Kosinu and Kapier and Teller come into the starting eleven. So Kovac is in goal. Stanisic, Tarr and Kosinu look like the three centre-halves. Uh, Teller and then Kapier will be the two wide players. Xhaka and Palacios in the centre of midfield. And Wurtz, of course, who scored that second-half hat-trick on Sunday against Werder Bremen. He'll be alongside Grimaldo, providing the support to Schick, who will lead the line. A quick note on West Ham substitutes. Calvin Phillips and Alphonse Areola, who are having late tests. Neither of them have made the bench for West Ham United. OK, Adam, thank you very much. A couple of games underway I already mentioned. Uh, Aston Villa trailing Lille by a goal to nil over on Talk Sport 2 in the Conference League, that is, of course, and also in the same competition, Fiorentina nil, Victoria Pilsen nil. That was goalless after the first leg as well. So nothing between those two sides on what will be a busy evening of European football across the network. Could go late into the night with extra time and possibly penalties once again. Let's take a look at the latest football action with Labrooks. The big preview on Talk Sport with Ladbrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus begambler.org. Right, OK, let's take a look at the latest football action and react to the team news uh, between Atalanta and Liverpool tonight with the former West Ham, Norwich and England striker Dean Ashton, who's alongside Joe Shannon. Good evening, Dean. Good evening, Hugh. Yeah, I wasn't expecting Liverpool to be in this position, to be honest, but obviously we were there last mm. week and... Atalanta were very much worthy winners. Absolutely, they were, and it gives Liverpool really everything to do tonight. But what do you really feel the chances of a huge upset are? Because we've seen historically with Liverpool, when the odds are stacked against them, they have produced they have produced some brilliant, brilliant results. They have, and that is why I, I cannot rule it out, because the, I think they are one of, one of only a probably... Um, 10 teams that probably are, are capable of it um, in a competition like this, um, Liverpool. But I just look that the, the starting lineup is, is pretty much as I would have expected. I just think Jota maybe not starting, um, I think it's a blow, uh, whether that is fitness issues or not. Obviously, having scored a hat trick against Atalanta before in his career, also. And I just think finishing is the key with how they played in the last two games, um, both. The, the return leg and and Crystal Palace I just felt like Jota could be the key and, and I look at this team and Alexander Arnold's in and Van Dijk's in and Robertson and they've got the experienced Salah uh, of those great nights especially Barcelona but I just wonder whether this team is ready and have they got the the characters the Hendersons the the Marnes the Van Aldams you know for me have they got those characters that are capable of putting in a performance when it is really needed I think that's a big question tonight and it's going to be fascinating to see if they can step up it was a tactical masterclass from Atalanta under Gian Piero Gasparini exquisite in the first leg but they have to be kind of wary of complacency they have only won three of their last ten games in all competitions they made themselves look like one of the best teams in Europe at, Europe at Anfield last week but a two-wall draw with Verona in Serie A at the weekend suggests they are very much human. And by the way, that's a match in which they led 2-0 after 18 minutes. Bear in mind, Liverpool won 5-0 in Bergamo in the Champions League back in 2020. So who knows? Who knows? What do you think, Joe? And I'll ask you this about the mentality of Atalanta here tonight, because the complacency is maybe the only worry from their, their perspective. Well, I think from a Liverpool perspective tonight Jurgen Klopp will look at what has been and gone before on previous European nights some of the remarkable comebacks that Liverpool have produced everybody talks about Barcelona they've done it before in the Europa League against Borussia Dortmund in his time in charge Liverpool have been renowned for their mentality over recent seasons under Jurgen Klopp but tonight is a massive test and I don't think many would expect them to overturn it this sort of situation has happened exactly 132 times in the history of the Europa League in the past, 132 times that an away team has won the first leg of a two-legged knockout tie by three or more goals, and not once has a deficit like that ever been overturned. When you look at that, with Liverpool having suffered back-to-back -back defeats, of course the first leg, and then the crushing blow really of losing to Crystal Palace in the Premier League on Sunday, which 
leaves them in real trouble in terms of the Premier League title race, even at just two points behind with six games to go. It'll take something remarkable for this Liverpool team to turn it around. And I think Dean is absolutely right. When you look at that team that beat Barcelona, the team of the past with the likes of Jordan Henderson, Gini Wijnaldum, Sadio Mane, are there the same characters? Are there the same... Did Liverpool have the same mentality, perhaps, as that class of 2019 showed? We'll find out, I suppose. Also, I, I, I just look at Gasparini and the way he set up last week. And, and that was a very attacking lineup. We looked before the game and we said Daron playing in the back three, um, Pasalic playing in midfield with obviously De Ketelier in, in there as well. It seemed a very attack. And, and it's clear, you know, you, they've only won one of their last four games, and that was the Liverpool. It's almost like he was. You know, building up to that performance away and, and almost earmarked Anfield as a place to go and hurt Liverpool on the break. You know, it was it was three 0 but Atalanta could easily have scored five. You know, the two other great chances in the first half, and then all of a sudden we come to this return leg, and he's changed it again. A little bit more defensive. Kolasinac coming in, Moranchuk up front as well. So I think we maybe have to give a huge amount of credit to Gasparini and what he has built over a. A number of years which makes this task I think even more difficult for Liverpool. We're going to build up to it some more before our kickoff 8 p.m. here on Talk Sport. I don't know. I just there's something in the air for me tonight. We're going to find out from 8 p.m. as I say that was all thanks to Labrooks. It's 18 plus and make sure you check out BeGambleAware.org. The big preview on Talk Sport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Well, things have got worse for Aston Villa over on TalkSport 2. 70 minutes on the clock. They now trail Lille by two goals to nil. 3-2 on aggregate. Let's get a flavour of the commentary with our commentary team, the former Chelsea and Benfica defender Scott Minto, who's alongside TalkSport's Alex Crook. Already has come on and made a bit of a difference, but I also think it shows that the confidence or lack of 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 Villa and Luca Dinia, the, the, the ball was coming down and he could have brought it down inside the box. Instead, he let it bounce to go out for a corner. Douglas Luiz to take that corner from the near side. Lille 2, Villa nil. 3-2, the French side ahead now over the two legs. It will be them heading for a semi-final. Douglas Luiz into the near post, though, flicked on by Torres. Cleared as far as Luca Dinho, got to shot the work, who got the shot away. And then it's Martinez who picks it up midway inside the Aston Villa half as we welcome once again listeners on Talk Sport. Aston Villa 2-0 down in France and as it stands will be exiting the Conference League they're on the attack now though Matty Cash into McGinn right in the centre of the Lille half a bit more urgency from Unai Emery's men since they conceded the second goal a header from the Lille captain Andre but Luca Digne can't keep the ball in play Scott Minto and you have to say Lille has defended really well well Thiago Santos he's been man of the match by a million miles defending really well he's been getting forward really well but the problem is for Aston Villa you know they're 2-0 down they, they're now a goal behind an aggregate they need to score but they've been so poor going forward as I say defensively they haven't been great but in midfield they haven't been able to create any kind of tempo they're not giving any quality ball up to Ollie Watkins they haven't even had a shot on target yet and we're 72 and a half minutes in yeah, Matty Cash into the side netting. The only real attempt on goal from Aston Villa. The early strike from Yazier and that header from Andre from a corner have put Lille in command of the tie. 18 to go. Lille 2, Aston Villa nil. 3 2, Lille lead on aggregate. Uh, and look, you know. OK, Alex Crook and Scott Minto with you on TalkSport 2. Remember, it's available via your smart speaker. You can get it on DAB and, of course, on the TalkSport app where tonight you might want to be because you can move seamlessly between events at the London Stadium over on TalkSport 2 and out in Bergamo here on TalkSport. We'll have much more build-up before 8 p.m. starts. You're listening to Kickoff on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. It's 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Kickoff on Talksport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Expo Guide to all the latest speculation, signings, and spending sprees with Simon Jordan's Football Business Roundup on Talksport with Tesco Mobile for Business. From the latest deals worth knowing to where the big money transfers are going, get the inside track in one all covering football finance feature. Simon Jordan's Football Business Roundup on Talksport with Tesco Mobile for Business. Join Tesco Mobile and get business phone bills for up to 40% less than the big mobile networks. Tesco Mobile, every little helps. For applicable terms and verification, see tescomobile.com/slash business. 
If your business is accused of damaging a client's property, for example, accidentally pouring tea all over their expensive audio equipment. Really, really sorry about that, by the way. <clears throat> then Hiscox could help protect you. The story of your business, underwritten by Hiscox Business Insurance, subject to already holding a relevant Hiscox policy and subject to policy eligibility terms and conditions. Happy birthday to you. Okay, Nathan, you're next. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Mum, birthday. my birthday's not till next month. Like getting your money's worth? Grab a McDonald's Save a Meal deal. That's a cheeseburger or mayo chicken, medium fries and drink for just three ninety nine. Also available via Just Eat until the 7th of May. Delivery price uplift and fees apply. Price may vary. Hey, Harry. Hello, mate. Got a nap lined up for today. Listen, pal, I may not look like the young stallion I once was, but I'm still fit as a fiddle, I'll have you know. No, no, Harry, that's not what I meant. I'm not even that old. I do boxer size three times a week, and my trainer says... No, I meant the horses. Your nap, your Napoleon, your best bet. Oh, well, you should have said that. My best bet would be to head over to Bet Victor and check out the latest offers they have on the horses. Listen to Harry and make your best bet on the racing at BetVictor. 18 plus, begambleaware.org. Just hearing the sound of something can transport you. Taking you to a happy place. The great outdoors. If you like the sound of that, then it's time for golf now. Our app is the ultimate golf companion for booking tea times. A few taps on your phone and you're tapping it in on the green. Sound good? Download Golf Now today. Hi, Sam. Yeah, just picked up my van from Renault Trucks. No, it's not a truck. It's my traffic van. But we're from Renault Trucks. They do vans too. Diesel and electric. Yeah, check online for opening times. Loads of their dealers do extended servicing hours. So perfect for us tradies. Dropped it off after work yesterday and picked it up first thing this morning. So no time wasted. Go to renotruckstraffic.co.uk. You can book a test drive for a new traffic van too. The football season is well and truly underway with Betfair. And if you're looking to get involved in all the action, then look no further. At Betfair, we've made it faster and easier to build your Acker this football season. Celebrate this weekend with a completely free Acker or Bet Builder on football. Betfair. Opt-in and previous deposit required. Max free bet varies from £1 to £10 per customer. Minimum odds of 1.5 on minimum one leg. T's apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. Europa League live on Talk Sport with Village Hotels. With 33 locations across the UK, Village Hotels have everything under one roof for a great breakaway. Hard-hitting football coverage. Saturday afternoon, the Women's Champions League live on TalkSport 2. It's in! Barcelona versus Chelsea. What a turn, what a goal! Coverage from 12, kick-off, 12.30. Saturday afternoon on TalkSport 2. Give us a goal. Well, English involvement in the Champions League this season has ended and it could end in the Europa League tonight. We'll check in on Aston Villa's progress in the Conference League shortly, but as it stands, they're going out as well, so it... Hasn't exactly gone smoothly so far. Will the Premier League's hopes of earning that extra Champions League spot for next year crash and burn tonight? We'll find out as Liverpool visit Atalanta here on TalkSport and West Ham host Bayer Leverkusen on TalkSport 2. Let's get an update ahead of those games with Labrooks. Odds update on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. Delighted to say we're joined by Chris Wood of Labrooks. Let's talk Atalanta against Liverpool. The, the odds aren't really in Liverpool's favour, although you might find some favourable odds. Yeah, no, I mean, um, Liverpool look way over bet for me tonight. Um, they're just a little bit shorter than one to two, um, considering what happened to in the in the home leg and the price they went off there. Uh, Atalanta look standout. Uh, they're 19 to four. Um, I'd assert, that would certainly be where I'd be looking to... Uh, to put my money. Uh, if you fancy Liverpool tonight, they're going to be relying on their, on their big players. Salah is uh, four to one to score two or more, and uh, you know could well need extra time. So um, they're fourteen to one to win extra time, or twenty-eight to one to win on penalties. Um, if Skamaka carries on his decent form as well, you can have him at eleven to five to score. West Ham have just come out here at the London Stadium to begin their warm-up. Big night for them, trailing by Leverkusen by two. They've been brilliant, Leverkusen. They are now officially the Bundesliga champions. Would you bet against them tonight? 
I don't think so. I mean, yeah, they've been exceptional this season. Um, one sort of little ray of light for uh, West Ham is they have rested a few players, but um, I think with players like Florian Beertz up front, um, you can back him at uh, 16 to want to score two or more. He's been exceptional for them this year. Um, also, I really like uh, it's good to see Teller getting a start on the right. I think he could give Cresswell a bit of a hard time tonight. You can back him at three to want to score or around seven to two mark to assist. And um, they're just a shade of odds on 10 to 11 to win the game uh, in normal time, Leverkusen. And I, I, I don't think you can bet against them here. And Lille against Aston Villa are into the closing stages now. Do you think Villa can turn things around? Uh, it's looking ominous. They, I mean, Lille were, were actually really good uh, in, in the first leg. Um, you know, probably deserved uh, to, to to get a bit to get something out of that game. Um, yeah, they're currently. Uh, let me just double check the price. Uh, if you fancy Villa to turn it around, um, you're looking at uh, 11 to two um, for them to qualify. Um, and I just, yeah, it just really doesn't look hopeful for them at the moment. OK, Chris, thank you very much. Remember that Villa game, by the way, over on TalkSport 2 right now. That was a look at the latest odds with Labrooks. It's 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Odds update on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Well, let's take a quick moment to take a look back at what has happened so far in Europe this week, particularly when it comes to the hope of the Premier League sides alongside the former West Ham and England striker Dean Ashton. Dean, you'll know Manchester City's hold on the Champions League ended by Real Madrid, beaten on penalties at the Etihad Stadium and Arsenal made a disappointing exit as they were beaten 1-0 by Bayern Munich at the Allianz Arena. It did finish level four all, obviously, going to penalties between City and Real Madrid. Arsenal beaten 3-2 on aggregate by the German Giants. And I'm starting to think, Dean, that the strength of the Premier League, and we love it, and it's often touted as the best league in the world, is actually leading to some inconsistent performances from teams in Europe. Hear me out on this, right? English teams appeared in five of the previous six Champions League finals, which is good on the outside of things. But this season, Manchester United, who weren't in the Champions League last season, went out in the group stage. So did Newcastle. That was their first Champions League appearance in 20 years. Arsenal this season, their first appearance in seven years. Of course, we know about City, 13 straight years uh, in the Champions League. But if you think about last season, it was Spurs' first Champions League appearance in three years. Chelsea out of the Champions League this season after four straight years in it. Liverpool absent from the Champions League this season after six straight years in it. But you look at some of the teams doing well this season in the Champions League. Dortmund into the semis after seven straight Champions League appearance for Bayern. That number's 15. Paris Saint-Germain, it's 12. They went out, obviously... Excuse me, they are through as well. And Real Madrid, 26 straight Champions League appearances. The other quarter finalists, Barcelona, 19 straight appearances. Atletico Madrid, 11. So undeniably in my mind, the Premier League might be the best league in the world, but it is certainly hurting the chances of teams because you need the experiences of being there year after year after year. What do you think? I totally agree in terms of I think that experience can be key and, and we've seen it from the other teams you've talked about from around Europe that... that you know that experience that you know learning how to play certain games in especially away from home in this competition especially now that it's that it's changed and there's no away goals rules that that has changed the way teams approach games and especially um, away games as well and I just think you know yes it's the most exciting league in the world the Premier League we have so many incredible games week in week out in the Premier League and look it's physically taxing of course it is for so are the other leagues at, at times as well. But I just think there's no let up. You, you know, you look at Germany and they've they've given teams the weekend off to make sure the, to make sure they're ready for that next match. That has to that has to make a difference at the elite level when you're looking for the small percentages. It has to make a difference um, for for the other the other teams as well to to have a bigger break. I think than than the English teams. Um, so it is stacked against as I think in a way. But at the same time, I think the English teams, you know, tactically, I think the, the, the European teams have shown this season that they're better, that we think we've got these amazing teams and they've been picked apart by some of the European sides. And I think that does show that there is um, a different style in, in European football, whereas the Premier League's pretty much every single week, it is foot to the floor yeah. football. And there is a difference. And, and when you 
when you look at some of the other sides in, in European football, they you have to say they do get some free weekends where they play opposition where they cruise through and they can make changes and they can cruise through the game. That, that never happens in the Premier League. What do you make of the two exits then? Manchester City on penalties, Arsenal defeat at Bayern Munich. And, and how do you think it affects now the Premier League title race? I think it favours City because I think they've got more experience of having setbacks um, and still being able to plough on through in the, in the Premier League, especially now they've got their, their noses in front. I thought City were brilliant. I thought they were outstanding. It's just... Again, teams can show that they can spot a weakness and it, and it is on the counter-attack against City. And when you've got that pace and, and skill that Real Madrid have got, they only need a couple of moments. But City absolutely dominated them for so long periods in the, mm. in the game. Arsenal slightly different. I, I was disappointed in Arsenal. I, I really fancied them against Bayern Munich, who were in poor yeah, form in the league. Too. So for the way that Bayern, I thought, controlled you know, most of the two legs that that did surprise me I tend to agree with you on that Dean Ashton will be back with you a little bit later on hoping Liverpool will fly the flag maybe West Ham too in terms of the English teams in Europe remember Aston Villa against Lille over on TalkSport 2 right now Villa still trailing by one goal in the tie not long to go either you're listening to Europa League live on TalkSport with Village Hotels find everything under one roof for a great breakaway at Village Hotels Kickoff on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Happy birthday. May this year bring you happiness. And XDB's investment plans. Uh, wait, what? You don't know. XDB's investment plans are a great way to start achieving your goals. Absolutely. Choose your desired ETFs, select a funding method like auto investing, allocate your assets, and you're good to go. And the best part? It's zero commission. Download the XTB app and start passive investing with investment plans. For monthly turnover equivalent of up to €100,000, T's and C's apply. Your capital is at risk. The value of your investments may go up or down. Licking your chickeny fingers while gazing into your co-worker's eyes is not appropriate. Taking a bite of a twister wrap while gazing into your co-worker's eyes is totally appropriate. So be a good workmate and get yourself a KFC lunch meal deal from just 5 49 It's workplace appropriate for when finger licking is not. Weekdays until 3pm, in-store at participating restaurants only. See kfc.co.uk for full T's and C's. Bet UK have got some mad offers. Like what? Free bets? Yeah, man. £30 in free bets when you bet £10. You're joking? Really? Yep. And even with a free bet, I still wouldn't back your team. Oh, whatever, mate. (laughs) Whatever you think, visit betuk.com or download the app to get your £30 in free bets. Bet UK. It's where the UK bets. New customers only, £10 minimum bet. Minimum odds and T and C supply. 18 plus, please gamble responsibly. Not shopped at Ocado, but you've heard it's the best. Now you can shop for 25% less. And groceries delivered free to your address. There's an Ocado just for you. First time customer, get 25% off your grocery shop and free delivery. There's an Ocado just for you. New customers only. Minimum spend £60. Max saving £20. Geographical restrictions apply. Conditions at Ocado.com. Verify at info at OcadoRetail.com. Just hearing the sound of something can transport you. Taking you to a happy place. The great outdoors. If you like the sound of that, then it's time for golf now. Our app is the ultimate golf companion for booking tea times. A few taps on your phone... And you're tapping it in on the green. Sound good? Download Golf Now today. Need help to grow your business online? Vodafone Business presents Digital SOS with me, Stephen Bartlett. Going digital is everything nowadays. I could really, really do with some help. If your business is struggling with its digital skills, Vodafone Business has got you covered. Vodafone V-Hub is a free place to go to for small business support and practical guidance. Search Vodafone V-Hub now and you can book a free consultation with a V-Hub advisor today. 
There are all sorts of fans who make racing what it is. The armchair expert who knows it all, right down to what the horse had for breakfast. The country gents head to toe in tweed and the ladies with their extravagant hats. The banana suited stag do lads and the nan who just backed the horse because it has a funny name. Whatever kind of racing fan you are, don't miss the Coral Daily Download every morning from 6 on the Superstar Breakfast on Talk Sport with Coral. We're here for it. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Europa League live on Talk Sport with Village Hotels. With 33 locations across the UK, Village Hotels have everything under one roof for a great breakaway. On DAB, online, on the app. And on your smart speaker, over 50 games of live football this April. Talk Sport. Talk Sport with Bostic. If you're looking for a professional grade sealant that offers technologically advanced performance, choose Bostic Pro Sealants. With the latest headlines, I'm Jeremy Lieburn. While it's all go in Villa's second leg of their Europa League Conference League quarter-final, they've just pulled a goal back at Lille a few moments ago, so they currently trail 2-1 on the night. That makes it 3-3 on aggregate. So we're currently in the, well, the last minute now, so heading for extra time. There's live commentary, don't forget, over on TalkSport 2. Back here on TalkSport with an 8 o'clock kickoff, Liverpool are looking to overturn a 3-0 first leg deficit this away at Atalanta in the second leg of their Europa League quarter-final. I hope you're staying with me. Also in the Europa League quarters with full commentary back over on TalkSport 2, West Ham will be looking to turn around a 2-0 aggregate score at home to new German champions Bayer Leverkusen. And EFL Chief Executive Trevor Birch says the decision to scrap FA Cup replays from next season is both frustrating and disappointing and has confirmed he'll be seeking compensation for league clubs. There's plenty more right now at TalkSport.com. The legendary White and Jordan. Weekday mornings from 10 on TalkSport. We're at the heart of the action. But don't just take my word for it. Lawrence Acoli. All the full 12 rounds, you know, some aches and pains. World Cup winner, Alexis McAllister. Today we scored the goals that we missed. When the big names talk, they talk to Jim White and Simon Jordan. Adam Azim. The first time on TalkSport, so thank you for having well me. Done, it's a pleasure. He's here, Eddie Heron. Delighted to be here today to deliver you astronomical numbers. Lord of the Radio Manor. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday morning from 10. On Talk Sport. Tonight, England is playing for pride in European competition. Premier League sides massively under-delivered in the Champions League. Their chances of progression in the Europa League hang by a thread. Liverpool trail Atalanta 3-0 after the quarter-final first leg. That will be live here on Talk Sport. West Ham trail by Leverkusen by 2-0 on aggregate. After defeat on the banks of the Rhine, we will have live commentary for you on TalkSport 2 as we ask whether the London Stadium can summon another great European night. We are here, and I'm alongside your commentator, Adam Bridge, who has your team. Yeah, West Ham United make three changes. The big news, Jarrah Bowen returns. Fabianski's in goal. So foul, Zuma again and Cresswell across the back. The three in central midfield. Alvarez is back from suspension. He's alongside Socek and Ward-Prowse with Bowen, Kudus and Antonio leading the line. Phillips and Ariola have both failed to make the squad. Three changes from Bayer Leverkusen from last Thursday night as well. Uh, Kovac is in goal. A back three of Stanisic, Tarr and Kosanyu. Across midfield, it's Teller, Palacios, Zaka and Capier with Vert and Grimaldo providing the support to Schick who leads the line Adam thank you very much good news for English hopes in the Europa Conference League Aston Villa have pulled a goal back late on it came through Matty Cash there was a big debate over it John Duran there big striker threw himself at a lost cause slammed into Nabil Bentaleb the former Spurs man who clattered his goalkeeper the ball spilt loose and Matty Cash fired home from the edge of the box. It means it is now three all in aggregate, and the match out in France is now heading to extra time. Let's join the closing stages over on TalkSport to your commentary team, the former Chelsea FA Cup winner Scott Minto, alongside TalkSport's Alex Crook. Angel Gomez, not long off the bench, is going to whip this in, right footed from the left hand side. As we welcome once again listeners from TalkSport, we are into the four for five Addy minutes at the moment we are heading for extra time Lille 2 Aston Villa 1 Villa with 2-0 down Matty Cash with three minutes of the 90 remaining firing in 
from the edge of the area after a mistake from the goalkeeper and they've got another corner to defend here Scott Minto absolutely and look Villa have absolutely got away with this one if they are able to get it into extra time but who cares they've been really poor tonight going forward defensively they've not been particularly great Lille have dominated this game but they've been vulnerable in set pieces Villa Gomez with a corner whipped him from the left hand side on the header has gone straight into the arms of Martinez. Diakito scored in the first leg. So close to winning it, deep in stoppage time. Anywhere, either side of the goalkeeper, and Villa are out. It's a great chance. Again, so vulnerable on set pieces. But you have to say that goal by Matty Cash now, after being completely dominated for, for pretty much the whole game. They've started to make mistakes, though, Villa. They've given it away again inside their own half. David to Gomez, not too many red shirts streaming forward. Caviero over on the left-hand side will try and take on Cash. This could be the last chance of normal time. The cross is deflected into the arms of Martinez. And he's just saying to his players... Keep it calm, lads. Let's take this to extra time and take our chances from there. 30 seconds remaining. Well, he's played in some big games, hasn't he? Martinez, he knows what it's like. But Villa have not been good, just giving the ball away a couple of times now after getting that equaliser equaliser on, on aggregate. As I say, I said it just before they scored. If Aston Villa were somehow, and I didn't know how they'd do it because they didn't look good going forward at all, but somehow able to get that goal, then the psychology of the time really does go and the momentum goes with Villa how good Lille have been and yet still not able to see off Villa now what can they do can they hold out at least to extra time and then what does Emery try and do play well, for Pence Morgan Rodgers is trying to keep the ball in play halfway inside his own half which just gifted it to Caballero and Lille might get one more opportunity here as a result of that mistake Santos who's been excellent the right fullback into Caballero he's got Andre and David waiting in the centre. It's a flying header away by Douglas Luiz. Not fully clear yet. Bentaleb, 30 yards out, the former Tottenham man. Diakata from the back, plays it to Goodmanson. Low cross from him, Compta clears it. Cash completes that with a rather scuffed effort away. And maybe Villa can counter. They've got three men forward here, Aston Villa. Duran just slows down the pace of the attack and belatedly finds Watkins. It's end to end at the end of stoppage time as both these sides look to find a winner. Now biting stuff for the 2,500 travelling Villa fans, but they're going to have to bite their nails a little longer because there is the full-time whistle. And after 180 thrilling minutes over the two legs, nothing to separate these two sides. A shake of the head from Andre, the Lille captain. He thought his header on 68 minutes to make it 2-0 on the night would be enough to take Lille into the semi-finals. But Matty Cash, with a crucial goal in the 87th minute, has levelled up the tie 3-3 on aggregate. We need the extra half an hour here on TalkSport 2. After 90 minutes, it's finished. Lille 2, Aston Villa 1. Alex Crook and Scott Minto there for you on TalkSport 2. So make sure you've downloaded the TalkSport app if you're out and about. It's an easy thing to do. Just swipe of the finger and you'll move between the action between Liverpool and Atalanta that kicks off at 8pm here. Events there between Aston Villa and Lille. And at the conclusion of that match, we will have West Ham's game with Bayer Leverkusen in the Europa League. So a very, very busy night here on the TalkSport Network as Aston Villa try and keep their hopes alive for a first European trophy since 1982. Another English side into extra time and who knows penalties. Like I say, that's live for you right now over on TalkSport 2. You, though, are listening to the Europa League live on TalkSport with Village Hotels. You'll find everything under one roof for a great breakaway with Village Hotels. Kickoff on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambled org. De Hiscox Business Insurance, que pretende mostrarle ciertos riesgos y peligros de los que Hiscox Business Insurance puede ayudarle a protegerse. <coughs> If your business gets blamed by a client for a mistake, like accidentally recording the radio ad in the wrong language, Hiscox could help protect you. The story of your business, underwritten by Hiscox Business Insurance. Subject to already holding a relevant Hiscox policy and subject to policy eligibility terms and conditions. 
Switch to EE and get our fastest full fiber ever. Well, how fast is fast? Up to 1.6 gig fast. So I can live stream the map. It's the Whilst I video chat with my friends. And they gave all at the same time. That's right. All powered by BT with absolutely nothing to pay up front. Talk Sport 2. Nothing. Not a thing. No wonder broadband so after switchers a dramatic night EE. in northern Offer France, we are going to extra time. Nil two, Aston Villa one. It's finished. Matty Cash for the last gasp goal Welcome to make it three to three to on Mancatino. aggregate for commentary to come Incredible. from extra time Welcome and penalties if required. And when we're finished here, we'll be straight to London Stadium, West Ham two nil down, going to the second leg, the home leg of their Europa League quarter final against Bayer Leverkusen. And your match commentator Adam Bridge can recap the team news. Hopefully, we'll get the same amount of drama here tonight. Alex at the London Stadium. West Ham make three changes tonight from the side beating 2 0 last week. There are six survivors from that conference final as well. Arnold Clark. Choose from three amazing gear dash cam, JBL TuneBud earphones, or a £50 Amazon.co.uk gift card. Don't miss out. Get your glove box goodies at every Arnold Clark branch in the UK. Find us at arnoldclark.com. Lidl, we're always big on quality and little on price. With super-powered savings on all your weekly staples, fresh deals on your fibre day and big brands that don't break the bank. You could save over £35 by switching from Sainsbury's to Lidl with this week's big shop at lidl.co.uk slash save. Prices check 15th of April 24th. Sainsbury's also sell other products. See online for more details. Listeners, we've uncovered the reason why Britain hasn't been so great of late. It's because the country hasn't been eating enough Weetabix. So to whoever's in charge of fixing potholes, to VAR and people who somehow managed to park over two bays, we must say, have you had your Weetabix? In sport, what's just as important as the goals, the glory, the roar of the crowd? Yes, it's the halftime break. Time for a breather, a reset to keep everything on track. In sports betting, Betfair's safer gambling tools help you do that too. Like timeouts, so you take that all-important halftime break. Or deposit limits, to help you keep count. Manage your play at safergambling.betfair.com. Simple ways to stay on top of your game with Betfair. 18 plus be gamblerware.org. Europa League live on Talk Sport with Village Hotels. With 33 locations across the UK, Village Hotels have everything under one roof for a great breakaway. It's the reason Marconi invented radio and God gave you ears. And he scored, it's a brilliant goal! The Europa League live on Talk Sport. It runs through to Edison, who's inside the box, this to finish it, comes back to Pasolic, it's in, it's 3-0, and Liverpool are in massive trouble in the Europa League. They keep putting themselves in positions where they've got to come back from behind because of the start of the game. You wonder how big these players are and how able they are to overcome the adversity. We have to be at our best to get into the next round. Lovely run in field by Bradley. He finds Darwin Nunez is clear. It's 2-1 to Liverpool. Now we go to a place where that in particular will be pretty difficult because they just have their own idea and are in a really good moment. Robertson brilliantly on to Diaz, edge of the area. It's Diaz inside the box from all past the goalkeeper and smashes it home. You're listening to Kick Off on Talk Sport with Labricks. We play together terms and conditions apply. It's 18 plus BeGambleAware.org, where Liverpool will have to summon all of their aura as European giants this evening. Under Jurgen Klopp, they've managed a remarkable comeback after losing the 2019 Champions League semi final 3 0 against Barcelona in the first leg. They've got a little bit of history there. The club, of course, can't forget the miracle of Istanbul. 3-0 down at half-time to AC Milan in the 2005 Champions League final. They came back to win it. The Reds, as I say, will have to summon all of that spirit, every ounce of that magic, if they're to do it once again and book a place in the Europa League semi-finals for 2024. Atalanta versus Liverpool is your live game here on TalkSport. Kickoff comes in a little bit over 10 minutes' time. Let's get a reminder of the teams with Joe Shannon. Well, Jurgen Klopp says that he's long enough in the business to know that it is two legs. Over when it's over, he says, the Liverpool manager, we are only here for one reason. A remarkable comeback. It would be 3-0 down to Atlanta after the first leg at Anfield last week. There are three changes from the weekend defeat 
to Crystal Palace. A welcome return to the starting eleven for Alexander Arnold. So Bosley and Gakpo also come back in. Bradley is injured. Endo and Nunez drop out. Addison in goal. Alexander Arnold, Canate, Van Dijk, and Robertson. McAllister, Sabosli, and Jones. Salah, Gakpo, and Diaz are the front three. Atalanta, two changes from the first leg. Kalasanac and Miranchuk both start. They have Musso in goal. Jim City, Hien, and Kalasanac are the defenders. Zappa Costa, formerly of Chelsea, and Ruggeri are the wing backs with Edison and Darone in the holding roles and Kopmanish behind Skamaka and Moranchuk up front. Joe, thank you very much. A reminder, it's a very, very busy evening of European football in the Conference League. Aston Villa and Lille have just got underway in extra time. You can listen to that live on TalkSport 2. At the conclusion of that game, we'll have events here at the London Stadium as West Ham try and overturn a two-goal deficit against the new Bundesliga champions by Leverkusen. But let's take a closer look uh, at our game between Atalanta and Liverpool with Dean Ashton, the former West Ham striker and his former manager at the Hammers, Alan Pardew, is here as well alongside me. Lots to discuss when it comes to Liverpool, particularly if they go out tonight, whether this season will be ending with a bit of a damp squib. They have already won the Carabao Cup final this year and Jurgen Klopp's final season in charge. His eighth major trophy in eight and a half years at the club. But that defeat against Crystal Palace at the weekend, Alice, uh, Alan, leaves, leaves them in third. Um, do you think they need to cap this time that Jurgen Klopp's had at the club and this season with some great football, albeit it seems to be tailing off, with a bigger trophy than the one they've already got? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, this week has been particularly bad for Liverpool. You know, the performance uh, against Atalanta and obviously Crystal Palace is massively damaging. And uh, they've given Man City the buck seat for the Premier League. This competition looks like a big haul tonight. But, you know, he is that kind of personality. They are that kind of team that can... That can bring something uh, in, 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 in an adversity and that's where they find themselves at the moment what worries me about them is their just lack of form right at this moment when it's crucial on this running Dean what do you think the, the announcement of Klopp leaving the club seems to have eat a lot more pressure on the end of this season do you, do you think it has helped or hindered them well it seemed to help them to start with and, and they've been on a, a great run to be honest but I just think defensively things have slackened off you know halfway through the season they were the best team defensively they were back to the sort of defense you saw when they won the league and Allison being out is a blow and they haven't kept a clean sheet in the last nine and that's got to be a worry if you Jurgen Klopp because even tonight there's no doubt they could score three four goals but are they going to keep a clean sheet and that I think that that has to worry him especially the way that they were picked apart I mean I'd like to get your thoughts Alan in terms of when you when you're a manager like that and you've had a team that's took you apart defensively, it must be then difficult to maybe set up in the same way. Yeah, I mean, the problem uh, he, he's had last year was very much centred on the defensive work. And they obviously focused on that, particularly at the start of the season. And, and you said they look, they look much better for it. But it's crept back in, that, that concern. And um, tonight... It will be a real test for them because mentally, as you know, Dean, you know, it affects players, a result like that, and it affects confidence. So, you know, they will be nervous tonight. They've just got to hope that when the moments come uh, for the opposition, they don't take them and they get away with a few things because I think that's how it's going to have to pan out. They're going to have to play very, very well and have the luck with them. And if they do that, then maybe they'll get something. Liverpool have conceded first in 25 of their 50, excuse me 21 of their 55 games so far this season so it's an old cliche but it really will be about the first goal this evening but if Liverpool score it Dean how do Atalanta keep their cool if they go one or maybe even two down because as we've seen over the years Klopp's teams thrive in the chaos they do and they can sweep you away very quickly and, and I'm pretty sure that's why Gasparini has made the changes that he has that he's expecting that he'll expect that sort of onslaught from, from Liverpool and will want that solid defensive unit with that back three and four in front of them um, and Miramchuk I think doing a bit more defensive work from the, from the front line um, I'd be amazed 
I mean, he might, but I'd be amazed if he goes fully man v man like he did last week at Anfield. I think they'll try and sit and kind of soak a bit of pressure knowing that, that Liverpool are vulnerable, especially in the wide areas, if they can then spring, uh, spring the counter-attack. And while I've both got you, we have to reflect on West Ham United as well, of course. The London Stadium, the fans now flooding into their seats. We're being treated to all the drama being built up, fireworks, flames in the air. And listen, they need that atmosphere here this evening if they're going to turn around a two-goal deficit against the side that has not been beaten all season in the shape of Xavi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen. But news today reported by TalkSport that David Moyes, their manager, leaving West Ham at the end of the season is becoming increasingly likely. He did claim in December that he had been offered a contract extension. His contract expires in the summer, but that deal remains unsigned. Alan, you've been in this hot seat. What does that do to a manager's psyche, his mentality, when news like that is coming out on the day of a massive game? Well, to be honest, that's just noise. You just got to put... You you get noise all the time as a manager and you've got to ignore that and I'm sure it hasn't really bothered him today it might bother him uh, in a couple of days time or whatever when, when he, he gets the, when he gets the questions tonight probably. yeah exactly <laughs> or when he gets home with his wife and you know how did that get leaked out etc etc the bottom line for David Moyes is forget about his style for a moment he's done a wonderful job here and um, they have a European trophy they're in the quarterfinals tonight albeit a tough agenda so I think he can rest on his laurels and he'll be fine in the summer. He'll get a contract here. If he doesn't, he'll get a contract elsewhere. So if I was his agent, I wouldn't be concerned about that. I think his legacy that he'll want to leave is, uh, is to finish on a high. And then, then he's got a really tough ask tonight. You know, the last game, the stats. I'll just give you two stats. 740 passes by a Labour Cousin. West Ham got 279. 33 shots for Bayer last year, last week and one for West Ham. So, they're, and they're coming up against a team that love to have the ball, and that's going to cause them a problem because to create the to create this level of noise that they're getting before the game, they're going to need to get some of the ball, a lot more of the ball. Superb atmosphere in the London Stadium. Absolutely. They will have to latch onto that as the 12th man here this evening. Oh, Dean, can you understand why there's still a debate? over David Moyes from the fans they are split some saying what a brilliant period it's been what more could you want as a Hammers fan and others saying no we can be even better and we could be even more entertaining did you get where they're coming from that split that divide I can if you watch it every single week and you pay good money to watch it because he has got his own style and he's been very successful in in doing that in doing that but as Alan said there against most teams they give up possession. I think they average about 40% possession in the Premier League. So that's against most sides, week in, week out. They give the ball back to the opposition for a long period of the game, which, which can be hard to watch. They'll show 10, 20 minutes where you think they look electric, West Ham, and they've got some terrific, some sort of terrific players. But at the same time, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't blame him at all if he turned around and, and went, actually, I'm done. You know, what more can I do? He keeps going on. And, and feeling like he has to back himself in every interview to say, look, no manager has had European football three seasons in a row and talked about getting the trophy. And, and he might just turn around and go, do you know what? There'll be some great options for me. My time here is done. Dean, thank you. We're going to move to the commentary between Atalanta and Liverpool, but Alan Pardew will remain here at the London Stadium as the teams come out for West Ham United against Bayer Leverkusen. You will get that at the conclusion of what is currently Lille 2, Aston Villa 1. Three all on aggregate over on TalkSport 2 right now. The Lille goalkeeper has just made the save of his life, by the way. So everything hanging in the balance. In fact, it's a night where there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. West Ham, two goals down to Bayer Leverkusen. Could they reach a third straight European semi-final? And could David Moyes silence his critics? That will be live for you on TalkSport 2. And Liverpool, three goals down to Atalanta. At their best, Jurgen Klopp side have a chance, but can they find their best? We're about to find out. The Europa League quarter-final second leg is live on TalkSport with the former England striker Dean Ashton and TalkSport's Joe Shelley. Thanks, Hugh. Good evening, everyone. After a desperately disappointing seven days, the rest of Jurgen Klopp's final season at Liverpool now hangs in the balance. 
and tonight could be the last we see of Klopp at Liverpool in Europe barring one of those miracle Reds comebacks. And we've certainly seen plenty of those over the years, in particular, of course, the, 19, uh, the 2019 Champions League semi-final recovery over Barcelona from 3-0 down after the first leg. That ranks as a defining moment under the manager, one of the great nights in Liverpool history. So Clant, the class of 2024, repeat this most remarkable of tricks in the Europa League and keep Liverpool's seemingly fading treble hopes alive here tonight in Bergamo. The floodlights are on, the two teams are out on the field of play, Atalanta in the dark blue and black striped shirts with black shorts and black socks, Liverpool all in red, the atmosphere is really sizzling here in, all the, in northern Italy, great excitement among the locals with Atalanta on the verge of only the second European semi-final in their entire history. About 750 Liverpool supporters have made the trip to Italy. That's partly because of work being done at the south end of the stadium. And we're just about ready to get off and underway. Liverpool, Alisson in goal. Alexander-Arnold, Canate, Van Dijk and Robertson. McAllister, Saboslai and Jones. Salah, Gakpo and Luis Diaz for Atalanta. Musso, the goalkeeper, Jim City, Hien and Kolasinac, Zappa Costa and Ruggeri are the wing-backs. This familiar 3-4-3 that has worked so well for Gian Piero Gasparini over the years at Atalanta. Edison and Daron in the holding roles and Cope Minish behind Scamacca, who scored a brace in the first leg. The first Italian to score a brace against Liverpool at Anfield ever. And Miranchuk is alongside him up front. So can Liverpool make Europa League history tonight and produce another comeback to rank among the best in the storied European tale of the club? We are off and underway on a massive night for English clubs in Europe and we are live on Talk Sports and Liverpool are 3-0 down on aggregate. They know what they have to do and they win a throw deep inside opposition territory on the far side. The Liverpool left as we look at it. Andy Robertson will take the throw. He'll go back towards the halfway line and Virgil van Dijk wearing the captain's armband. Square ball to Ibrahima Karate just inside the Atlanta half. Immediately looks to set Alexander-Arnold away on this inside right channel. And Kolasinac goes down, the former Arsenal player, shoving the back from Alexander-Arnold. And that's a free kick to Atlanta inside the first minute. Dean Ashton former England striker alongside me for commentary will be keeping a keen eye on Dean's former side West Ham as they aim to overturn their own deficit 2-0 down on aggregate to the newly crowned German champions Bayer Leverkusen but for Liverpool tonight Dean it's a straightforward task in the sense that they know exactly what they need to do how much of a chance do they actually have though of overturning a 3-0 deficit well they have a chance because they've got quality players players that can put two, three goals past you in a, in a period of 20 to 25 minutes. We've seen it done time and time again from this team in terms of going forwards. But I have to say, it's been a long time since I've seen that back five with Alisson, Alexander Arnold, Canate, Van Dijk and Robertson. And you just wonder, can they keep Atalanta out? I'll give them a great chance. Liverpool playing from left to right in the first half towards the south end of the Gavis Stadium which is empty of supporters, as I say, partly because it's being worked on at the moment. The stadium has been almost entirely reconstructed over recent years, and Atalanta in their dark blue and black, playing from right to left. Liverpool have enjoyed almost all of the possession inside the first couple of minutes. Robertson thinks he's won a throw. Far side the Liverpool left, just shy of the halfway line. The match referee is Francois Le Texier of uh, France, and the... Two Liverpool physios have darted onto the field of play. Liverpool have been uh, beset by injuries at times over the course of the season, and Dean alluded to it with the lack of consistency that they've been able to have in that once familiar back five. And Jurgen Klopp is watching on here with a concerned look on his face because it looked to me uh, like Van Dijk is the man receiving treatment for Liverpool in the first couple of minutes. Yeah, I wonder whether he's just got an issue with uh, maybe a dislocated finger. I think he just kind of shuffled over and he's not actually looking at his hand which I think says everything about what the issue is I think we've seen that 
before there's no way the captain's going to come off that'll be uh, probably put back into position strapped up but a nasty injury all the same for Virgil van Dijk van Dijk jogs away and Liverpool who have suffered back-to-back -back home defeats in all competitions for the first time since 2021 one of Atalanta's great results in all of their history and Atalanta will sportingly give the ball back to Liverpool who put it out of play originally to allow Van Dijk to receive treatment he's back onto the field Atalanta nil Liverpool nil on the night dark skies overhead in northern Italy and 3-0 to the Serie A side on aggregate Lille 2 Aston Villa 1 into extra time in France in the Europa Conference League three all on aggregate will keep you up to date and Fiorentina lead Victoria Pilsen by a goal to nil on aggregates also an extra time in their Europa Conference League quarter-final everything else is nil-nil including West Ham's second leg against Bayer Leverkusen in the very early stages at London Stadium though West Ham of course 2-0 down on aggregate after the first leg Van Dijk with a header away for Liverpool from midway inside his own half you're listening to talk sport and the ball is hooked downfield by Skamaka who was such a potent threat at Anfield this time last week all the way through into the arms of Alisson and a boost of course for Liverpool to have Alisson back despite Kelleher generally being excellent as his deputy and what a ball by Alexander-Arnold over the halfway line he's hit that fully 50 yards to find Diaz down by the dead ball line he skips infield he crosses right footed it could reach Sabosla at the back post headed it back across cleared away by Ruggeri and that looked like handball after the cross of Alexander-Arnold and Liverpool have a penalty inside five minutes clear handball by Matteo Ruggeri Alexander-Arnold's cross the referee Francois Le Texier had very little hesitation to point to the spot. Ruggieri's arm clearly outstretched, clearly hits the hand of the defender. Clear penalty to Liverpool. And now the opportunity to claw back one of those three goals that they need. Well, now then, what a chance for Liverpool to get off to the perfect start. Ruggieri turns his back and it just misses his chest and his arm is just dangling there. And it just judders the arm away from his body, clear as you like, for the referee to point to the penalty spot. And they have to, you feel, take this early opportunity. And what will that do mentally to Atalanta? VAR is checking it, but surely there's no debate to be had about this decision. Jerome Brissard is the video assistant referee in communication with the on-field official, the Texier, but it looked easily at first glance in real time but that's a clear penalty of Ruggieri yeah and I think it's been confirmed the main thing as well is this cross is going right into the danger area and Ruggieri's arm is just dangling there like I said and it's going to be Mohamed Salah that takes it looking for his 24th goal of the season in all competition Salah Liverpool who have to score three tonight in normal time at least a place in the semi-finals of the Europa League at stake this is the empty end of the stadium so the boos and whistles you can hear are all around the three open sides of the ground but no one's there to put off Mo Salah behind the goal it'll be a straight run up for Liverpool's main man now he curves it, hits the ball, left footed into the bottom corner goalkeeper went the wrong way here we go, here we go it's Liverpool on the comeback trail again six and a half minutes gone Atalanta nil Liverpool won on the night and Liverpool really starting in the perfect fashion as they seek to produce a miracle recovery in Europe again well, I don't know why, because he's such a fantastic goal scorer, Mo Salah. But you just never feel 100% comfortable when he's taking a penalty. He's had his misses in the past, and you've got McAllister there, who's so superb at it. But he was clinical, wasn't he? Sending the goalkeeper the wrong way, powerful along the surface. And it's really game on for Liverpool. Liverpool have utterly dominated the opening seven minutes here in Bergamo. And the home supporters have been utterly silenced, and those... 750 Liverpool fans who've made the trip are all you can really hear now at the Gavis Stadium. A long way still to go, but Liverpool have made a dream start and they're playing with great determination and purpose. Alexander-Arnold's high ball through the middle is headed away. 
They can't get a touch on the ball, Atalanta, at the moment. If anybody can do it, Liverpool can. Robertson's cross, and it's cleared away by Isak Hien, the Swede at the heart of the Atalanta back line. Another thumping header downfield from him. One in the air by Canate. It's Atalanta nil, Liverpool one on the night. Liverpool three, one down now on aggregate. But you feel that the momentum of the tie maybe even has changed quite a bit already, Dean Ashton. Yeah, I mean, look, Liverpool started with a great tempo and already Atalanta will be realising what a different... Oh, what a ball that is! By Mo Salah towards the boss line and the goalkeeper was quick off his line, Musso, who did impress with several good saves at Anfield in the first leg. Salah's slide rule pass, so boss line couldn't reach it. Liverpool lead 1-0 in the second leg. Oh, but I think... I think he has a right to go sliding in with the goalkeeper there and maybe get a touch. He just gives up to Bosley and allows the goalkeeper to claim easily. Jurgen Klopp said before the game, if we fail, let's do it in the most beautiful way. It'll be tough, but it's still possible with a good performance. And what a start Liverpool have made here. An ominous start. Leading by a goal to nil. 3-1 down on aggregate. Atalanta have not really got started in the game at all yet. Gasparini, the head coach, would have known this was coming. So many plaudits that he's had over the years and actually been linked with the Liverpool job of late. Very flattered to hear those links, he said in his pre-match press conference. And Atalanta do in a free kick just inside Liverpool territory. And the Ranchuk, the forward, will take it. Goes back to Hien, who floats the ball through the middle and it's reached Miranchuk again. Out towards the far side, the right, and Zappa Costa cleared upfield by Liverpool. Dean Ashton. Yeah, I was just saying before that great ball from Mo Salah, is, there's a difference in the Liverpool side and it's Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's such a wonderful player. You can feel like you're set defensively. But he's got such an eye for a pass. He talked about that 50-yard crossfield pass to Diaz that set, set him away. And his involvement in the penalty, he's such a special talent, he can make the difference and they've missed him. West Ham nil, Bayer Leverkusen nil at London Stadium, elsewhere in the Europa League quarter-finals. West Ham 2-0 down on aggregate and Aston Villa into extra time away at Lille. Three all on aggregate in the Europa Conference League. We'll keep you right up to date, of course, as the ball is floated high downfield towards the run into the penalty area of Zappa Costa for Atalanta. Virgil van Dijk with a calm cushion header clear for Liverpool. Liverpool lead by a goal to nil on the night. Trail 3-1 on aggregate. Ten and a half minutes into the second leg, live on Talk Sport. Header away by Kolasinac for Atalanta. And now touched on downfield by Edison, the Brazilian. And it's an opportunity for Koopmanisch, the very talented young Dutchman, to chase. Link with a move away from Atalanta. It was Kanate who's got great pace racing back with him towards the dead ball line. And eventually it's out of play for a goal kick to Addison and Liverpool. And a great exuberance and energy about this Liverpool team early on, Dean. On a night where, having been profligate in recent weeks, they know they have to take every chance they get. Yeah, and I thought they liked that at Anfield. It was a, a strange atmosphere before the game. Mo Salah feels like he's just been fouled, but it's a great tempo to the game from both sides, actually. Atalanta aren't going to just totally sit back because they know there's opportunities on the break, and Skamak has been so good at holding the ball, physically dominated at Anfield also. And so Bosline's got the ball for Liverpool, down by his own corner flag, and the pressure from Ruggeri, but in that tight space he feeds alexander arnold who pings a delightful long pass crossfield right to left towards the halfway line and Diaz with a neat layoff to Curtis Jones and now Andy Robertson joins the attack early ball towards Gakpo Diaz is clear goalkeeper saves Gakpo can't reach the rebound what a good stop that was by Musso diving at the feet of Luis Diaz to clear the ball away excellent football from Liverpool and here they come again now Jones to Bosley, 25 yards out and it's straight at the goalkeeper who gathers that was a swerving shot from Sabosli, but Liverpool could easily have scored twice in the first 12 and a half minutes and they'd only be a goal behind on aggregate. Terrific football from Liverpool, Randy Robertson with a great ball in towards Gakpo, lovely little cushion touch, but it was just a fraction away from Luis Diaz, but you have to say, Musso does brilliantly, he's so sharp off his line at the feet of Luis Diaz to stop that, and then his handling of Sabozlai's strike from distance was excellent also. But Liverpool well on top. The winners of this tie would play either Marseille or Benfica. 
in the Europa League semi-finals. Benfica two on ahead on aggregate in that tie. As here comes Zappa Costa, formerly of Chelsea on the far side, the right for Atalanta. Deep ball in from the right wing position is miles overhead. Nowhere near either Skamaka or Cope Minish. And the ball has gone out of play and it's a Liverpool throw. Now heading towards penalty kicks in France. Lille 2, Aston Villa 1 on the night, 3 all on aggregate and there's commentary over on TalkSport 2 of that. As Liverpool give it away, carelessly through Saboslai and now an opportunity for Skamaka to find Kurt Minish. Low cross goal, Van Dijk's touch, clawed away by Alisson. Remarkable stop from the goalkeeper and the flag was up anyway in the build-up. Van Dijk nearly inadvertently poked it past his own goalkeeper. Alisson's reactions were extraordinary, but fortunately for Liverpool, there must have been an offside in the build-up against Skamaka it was. Yeah, it's a, a really bit of poor play from Saboslai, just giving the ball away to Maramchuk, plays that ball into Skamaka, who just got a fraction early. Obviously Van Dijk and Alisson weren't to know, and you're right, brilliant athleticism from Alisson to claw that away from the line. It's just a reminder for Liverpool that Atalanta have got that threat if they do give the ball away. Fiorentina tuning up on aggregate in the Conference League against Victoria Pilsen, meanwhile. And there's been a goal in the Europa League at London Stadium. Talk Sports Ian Abrahams. West Ham won by a Leverkusen. The goal coming on 13 minutes. Cross in for the right-hand side. And Mikel Antonio with a bullet header from close range. 2-1 on aggregate now to the Germans. West Ham 1, Bayer Leverkusen 0. Could a remarkable comeback be on for David Moyes and West Ham? Last season's Europa Conference League winners against a Bayer Leverkusen team who have not lost at all this season under Xabi Alonso. Good ball up the middle by Saboslai, intercepted and cleared away by Hien at the heart of the Atlanta defence. Atlanta 0, Liverpool 1 on Talk Sport. Liverpool need two more at least. And they've given the ball away to Skamak on the halfway line. Alexander Arnold with a rather casual half volleyed ball all the way back to Allison. Roma 2 0 up against Milan now on aggregate in the Europa League. And Fenerbahce 1 Olympiakos 0 in their Conference League second leg. That's now 3 all on aggregate. Goals flying in around Europe tonight. And Aston Villa may be set for a quarter final penalty shootout in Lille. That's still level at three all live on Talk Sport 2. Liverpool on the attack with Cody Gakpo. Ball up the inside left channel. Sliding into clear it away is Jim Seti, the Albanian, in front of Luis Diaz. He's already had one good opportunity to score for Liverpool tonight, but it's certainly a much improved, much more diligent, much more tenacious display from Liverpool inside the first 16 minutes. Well, you can already see just the faces of the Atalanta defenders, that back three. Already just looking like that pressure is building. More so than any time in that first leg. Liverpool's tempo, the movement, the passing has been terrific to start this game. Obviously the boost of the, the early goal. And it would be history for Liverpool tonight if they could claw back this deficit. And the whole history of the Europa League and the UEFA Cup, 132 previous instances where an away side has won the first leg of a two-legged knockout tie by three or more goals. None of those deficits have ever been overturned. Can Liverpool be the very first to do it tonight in the Europa League and the UEFA Cup as it used to be now? Given away by Saboslai, careless pass upfield. It'll trickle out of play apologetically for a throw to Atalanta on the near side there left. Ruggieri, who conceded the penalty of Alexander-Arnold's cross for handball will come across to take it but no question that Liverpool are buoyed by the good start they've made for the second leg it's scooped forward by Skamaka for Atalanta and Robertson will easily beat Zappa Costa to it hooks it higher over his shoulder downfield he heads it away not entirely convincingly Diaz has got the ball left with the edge of the 18-yard box back it goes to Robertson again Liverpool keep possession calmly on the halfway line with the captain Van Dijk and Saboslai with the dark hair. Little touch back to Kanate. Out to the near side and Alexander Arnold right in front of the watching Jurgen Klopp in the tight dugout space in front of the main stand. An extraordinary weekend of football to come 
on the Talk Sport Network. Live games from the Championship, the Premier League, both FA Cup semi finals. The first leg of the Women's Champions League semi final between Chelsea, who are away at Barcelona. Wolves against Arsenal, the Premier League on a Saturday evening. Leicester against West Brom, huge game in the Championship promotion race on Saturday lunchtime. And much, much more. More live football than anybody else across the TalkSport network and the best way to be across it all is to download the TalkSport app just got to quickly mention Jurgen Klopp's jacket he's looking for a bit <laughs> of history and it looks quite historic it's a, almost like an old school shell suit top it's retro isn't it Dean it is red and white almost like as you say the classic Liverpool coaches jackets of the past given away by Diaz for Liverpool rather carelessly and in a dangerous position here come Atalanta with Skamaka on the edge of the D, he pokes it through the middle and there was an opportunity darting into the penalty area for his strike partner Miranchuk, but his first touch was heavy, Alisson able to make the save, 19 minutes gone Liverpool trail 3-1 on aggregate really good football from Atalanta, ball into Skamaka really good first touch from him outside of the foot prod towards Miramchuk, he's got to take a better touch if he does, he's through and he's got a great chance, it's a poor touch though he lets it get away from him to Alisson, but again Atalanta showing there is much a match for Liverpool in an attacking sense too much weight on the pass just then from Alexis McAllister, high towards the far side, the left wing position as we look at it and out of play for a throw to Atalanta Aston Villa have gone to penalties away at Lille in the Conference League. Talk Sport 2 will bring you every kick of the penalty shootout live and in full. That live on Talk Sport 2 right now. It finished 2-1 to Lille after extra time, so 3 all on aggregate. Unai Emery's side about to go to penalty kicks. The Talk Sport app absolutely essential at this time in the season. Free and easy to download, and you can swipe between both them and us on Talk Sport at your leisure. Nice touch by Salah, midway inside Atalanta territory, then a sweeping ball from left to right by McAllister to find Alexander Arnold. Led with the edge of the penalty area, digs it in towards the boss line, who on the stretch, an impossible angle, I think tried to tease it back across, slid towards the advertising hoardings, got a maybe a glancing blow on it, easily gathered by the goalkeeper though. It's just he's like an artist, is Alexander Arnold. Just pulled that down on the far side, the right. The defender just stood him up, he was stood completely still and out of nothing he just manipulates his right leg to just then whip with the inside of his foot a little clipped ball in towards Sabozlai who'd made a great run on the underlap and just couldn't quite see the flight of the ball to hook it back but once again, again you can be set in your positions defensively if you think everything's okay. You know, Alexander Arnold just puts a terrific pass over your head. And after three games without a win this is much more like the Liverpool that of course we've come to know under so many successful years of Jurgen Klopp lovely reverse ball Alexander Arnold down to the boss lay on the near side the right he's free on the dead ball line he cuts it back Alexander Arnold corner of the area onto his left foot dinks in the cross they're queuing up at the back post nodded back towards Salah who couldn't get it under control and it's smuggled away upfield by Jim City for Atalanta and Liverpool with Alexander Arnold totally dictating the pace and flow of the game should have made more of that they lead 1-0 on the night trail 3-1 on aggregate yeah again how often do, does he pick the right option Alexander Arnold this time onto his left foot and just lifts it to the back post little nodded header back down but they didn't make the most of that Salah wasn't quite ready for it and again they don't want to be too wasteful in this game they can't be wasteful in this game so after all the disappointment for English clubs in the Champions League last night the exits for both Arsenal and Manchester City maybe there is hope for English teams in Europe after all Aston Villa about to go into a penalty shootout against Lille for a place in the Conference League semi-finals on TalkSport 2 West Ham 1-0 up against Bayer Leverkusen in their Europa League second leg but still 2-1 down on aggregate and Liverpool have got one of the a minimum three here in Bergamo and though there are chants from the Atlanta fans behind the goal packed behind the goal to the left and lots of uh, blue and black banners away to the left hand side it's certainly not as excitable as this ground was before the game kicked off it's been a first 
quarter of the match that has been dominated in terms of possession and territory by Liverpool. Only really that Diaz effort aside though, the Salah penalty to show for it. And that's the goal that Liverpool have got on the night as Gakpo looks to burst down the middle. Robbed of possession by Edison who will send it back to goalkeeper Musso, the Argentine. High clearance downfield, touched on cleverly by Skamaka towards his strike partner Maranchuk who was just to the right of him. Midway into Liverpool territory now. Ball out to the far side, the right, and Zappa Costa with the bright yellow boots on. Takes on Luis Diaz. Liverpool have to be diligent defensively tonight. They cannot afford to do what they have done too often in recent weeks and, and give roots back into matches for sides or control back in the tyres it would be tonight for Atalanta D. Well, it's a, a balancing act, isn't it? They've got to gamble with the amount of players they get forward to try and overload Atalanta. But at the same time, can they make sure that they've got the positioning right? But if they do lose the ball, they're not overrun. Clearance away by Alexis McAllister from the right edge of his own penalty area. There were very fleeting appeals from one or two Atlanta players for what would have been a very harsh handball as McAllister swept it away from danger. The referee not remotely perplexed by that on the field. Roma 2-0 up on the night against Milan and now 3-0 up on aggregate in the Europa League. Here is an opportunity for Ruggieri, the wing-back, midway inside his own half, has given it away to Alexander-Arnold of Liverpool. Alexander-Arnold just shy of the halfway line, little touch back by Jones to the feet of Van Dijk and now Robertson takes control of possession inside that left-back spot. Canate will roll the ball back to goalkeeper Alisson. Liverpool certainly in command on the field at the moment but still with a lot of work to do in the time Alisson all in green away to our left hand side made his long awaited return from injury last weekend good turn by Jones which takes him up towards the halfway line and he floats a neat ball high up the inside left channel towards Salah Salah's brought it down in front of Zappa Costa infield to Diaz Diaz plays it backwards to Jones Touched on to Robertson and a square ball infield to Diaz again. Pokes it up towards Mo Salah, who's about five yards from the edge of the D. And now Canate. Liverpool building here, but not necessarily at this point. Needing to force the issue. 25 and a half minutes into the game, Dean Ashton. 3 1 down and out. No, and also that defensive shape for Atalanta when they have it. Looks pretty structured, doesn't it, with the back three and then the four in front. So. It's not exactly going to be easy to penetrate that Atalanta defence when they're in their shape. So Liverpool trying to be patient. And ultimately, they've got a, a good grip on this game in terms of control. Here is an opportunity for Jones. Teasing away from the onrushing De Rode on the far side and back over the halfway line into his own half where Van Dijk collects possession. Fiorentina through to the Europa Conference League semi-finals after a... An extra time, 2-0 victory over Victoria Pilsen. 2-0 on aggregate in favour of Fiorentina. Penalties still in progress at the Stade Pierre Maroy in Lille. Aston Villa involved after a 3-all aggregate draw after extra time. Those penalties live right now on Talk Sport 2. Here is Canate for Liverpool, forward to Alexander-Arnold. I think Lille have missed their first penalty kick through the former Tottenham man Nabil Bentaleb as the ball is sent back to goalkeeper Musso for Atalanta. Clearance up into the dark evening sky met by the thumping header from Canate. Lovely little glancing touch by Diaz and the ball plucked out of the air by Jones. Out to his left is Robertson always looking to come forward on the attack. Robertson tried to find Jones in field, but he's caught in possession. Now Kopmeiner, who is very dangerous on the ball, the young Dutchman. Out to the right now, and Maranchuk. Skamaka in the middle, waiting for the cross, looping high to the back post, well over the head of Skamaka. Kopmeiner has managed to keep it in play, down by this near side, the corner flag, and his simple cross into the box is easily gathered by Alisson. They're quite fortunate there, Liverpool, and especially Sabozlai, because Kopmeiner's makes a great run 
from the near post to the back post. Oh, great ball. And Skamaka on the edge of the penalty area via a slight deflection. We'll find Moranchuk, whose left-footed effort from the edge of the box was always skewing wide of goal. Alisson dived to his left-hand side, but he was never going to have to make a save there. Goal kick to Liverpool, 28 minutes in. Atalanta nil, Liverpool won on the night. Liverpool trail 3-1 on aggregate live on Twitter. And they do they do look vulnerable, Liverpool. When they give the ball away and they have done in recent games. I mean they're being very adventurous at times. It is just Van Dijk and Konate all on their own. That was three against two when Coke Miners made the clever run but the ball wasn't good enough. And again there the finish wasn't great from Aramchuk just looking to clip it beyond Konate and Allison and got his angles wrong. Konate has committed a foul on Skamaka and Atalanta just in the last couple of minutes have slightly reinvigorated themselves they're seeing slightly more of the ball inside Liverpool territory and Skamaka formerly of West Ham two goals in the first leg is an obvious focal point at six foot four and that has just halted Liverpool's rhythm a little bit a free kick to Atalanta just inside Liverpool territory Atalanta who play in those Black and dark blue striped shirts, very similar to Inter. Here is Jim Seaty, long raking pass up over the halfway line, headed away easily by Van Dijk for Liverpool. The loose ball retrieved by the former Middlesbrough man, Derone, inside the centre circle. Out to the near side, the left, and Ruggieri, early left footed cross, headed away by Van Dijk. It wasn't the best of clearing headers from Van Dijk, it spun away and out of play for a throw to Atlanta, playing from right to left towards the north end of the stadium where raucous thousands are gathered behind the goal and Ruggieri will take the throw never with the edge of the 18 yard box yeah flags flying up isn't that end of the the field as Salah gets himself away oh brilliant goalkeeping great starting position from Musso to clear and his clearance hasn't gone far Van Dijk tried to have a go at goal from inside the centre circle and he sliced it horribly and barely made the halfway line that slice of the boot of Van Dijk and then there was a foul on Miranchuk on the halfway line and a free kick to Atalanta oh he's robbed us of something exciting there Van Dijk because the goalkeeper was so far out of his goal and Van Dijk thought he would have a, a real good swipe at it uh, Jason Cundy from the halfway line go <laughs> Lovely ball by Alexander Randall down the middle towards Gakpo. What a brilliant pass. Gakpo on the edge of the penalty area here for Liverpool. He's had to hold it up. He lays it on to Saboslai. He might get the return ball. Diaz from Salah in the area. Good covering though by the retreating defender. And Jim Seaty got just enough on that to block it off. And the loose ball was gathered by Musso. The chance is gone for Liverpool, but Jurgen Klopp's side continues to threaten. They need two more goals at least in Atlanta. What a challenge that is from Jim City. Honestly, the one two, Luis Diaz and Salah on the edge of the area, but he just spotted it at the last second, stretched out a boot. Otherwise, Luis Diaz has got the chance to score right in front of the goalkeeper. Vital interception there. Gasparini going mad on the near side touchline, the Atlanta boss here in Bergamo. Aston Villa, we're hearing 3 2 up in the penalty shootout in Lille. That for a place in the Europa Conference League semi finals. Live on Talk Sport 2 right now. And as soon as that game's done, they will go across to London Stadium where we've got our commentary team in place for West Ham against Bayer Leverkusen. West Ham lead by a Galton in the second leg, but they're 2-1 down on aggregate. Mikel Antonio has got that second leg goal for West Ham. Liverpool 1-0 up on the night at Atalanta. Long raking pass by Addison up the middle this time. Too much on that for Andy Robertson. And it's through to the goalkeeper, Juan Musa. Well, Jurgen Klopp will be, I think, very pleased with the first 32 minutes. And it underlines the fact that this is very much doable, this, for Liverpool, as long as they can keep themselves defensively sound. And that, that'll be the slight worry, because he knows they're taking a risk at times with the amount of tackers that they've got forwards, and they've already shown that they can be a threat, Atalanta. But he'll be pleased with the chances created already, the moments they've had, Liverpool. Also, he's got players on the bench that could make a difference. 
Van Dijk will steer the ball away for Liverpool. Only half away though, and it's poked downfield towards the Davide Zappa Costa. The offside flag was up against Zappa Costa, and Liverpool have a free kick on the edge of their own penalty area. Let's get the latest from the second leg at London Stadium on Talk Sport with Ian Abrahams. West Ham won by Leverkusen nil, but it's we've just had an on-the-pitch altercation. James Ward-Prowse involved in a, a foul in the middle of the park. Both benches got involved. Both on the pitch teams got involved. I think there was a red card shown to Billy McKinley. I'll sort that out for you. It's a West Ham assistant manager. West Ham won by Leverkusen nil, 2-1 on aggregate. Still to the Germans. Thanks, Ian. And you haven't missed anything here in Northern Italy. Atalanta nil, Liverpool won. Liverpool trail 3-1 on aggregate. And Roma 3-0 up on aggregate against Milan in the Europa League. But Roma are down to 10 men in the second leg. FC Halifax Town won, Oldham Athletic won in the National League. As Alexander Ardell with another sweeping pass from right to left towards the run of Cody Gakpo. Jim City trying to bring it under control and he miscontrolled it. The ball must have got a little glancing touch off his sole. And it's a Liverpool throw in the left wing position taken by Gakpo who gets the return ball from Jones. Jones back to Gakpo, down by the dead ball line. Can he produce a cross from five yards in front of the corner flag? It's a poor pull back that by Gakpo, intercepted by Cope Minish on the edge of the Atalanta penalty area. Liverpool with McAllister able to force a throw just inside opposition territory. But Liverpool have got to retain the sharpness that they showed in their play in the early stages, Dean Ashton, if they're to produce this remarkable comeback. Yeah, just been a little bit sloppy over the last 10 minutes with their play when they've had an opportunity. I really like what Diaz, Gakpo and Salah are doing at times, which is coming really narrow as a three, a front three which is allowing then the space for Robertson and Alexander-Arnold to have whenever they want it, or for Jones or for Sobozlai to utilise that space. And floated forward by Virgil van Dijk, taken down by Curtis Jones, angle against him in the area, good tackle coming in from Jim City at the last, and Daron was back there to make life, Liber uh, life difficult for Liverpool's Curtis Jones. Then there's a handball just inside Atlanta territory Liverpool take the free kick quickly and they keep possession going they keep the tempo high here in Bergamo Liverpool need to score at least twice more here is the boss light midway into opposition territory and it's his square pass now to Canate in the centre circle Liverpool have had 68% of the possession in the first half so far now the ball is worked wide to the left and Gakpo taking on Zappa Costa, darting in field away from two in the blue shirts. And now Robertson on the overlap on that far side of the left, floats in the cross high, a little over hit. Salah though will keep it in down by the near side of the field. Tucks it back about 10 yards to Saboslai, poked in field by Alexander Arnold. Now Alexis McAllister to dink it in high. Alexander Arnold can't control down by the dead ball line. Too much on that lofted pass from McAllister and for now for Atalanta the danger is gone they have a goal kick yeah, and the only slight issue with having the three so narrow is it does get congested so then when you want to play something clever like McAllister tried to there it makes it very difficult and you have to be perfect with the, the floated pass and it wasn't quite right and so there's a goal kick to Atalanta away to our right hand side Liverpool playing from left to right in the first half They've scored one of the minimum three goals that they need. Liverpool, who were 3-0 down after the first leg so famously against Barcelona in the Champions League semi-final in 2019. There was a Europa League quarter-final comeback in 2016 under Jurgen Klopp against Dortmund. Here is Gakpo for Liverpool, 30 yards out. Can he get the return ball from Salah? He does via a deflection. Gakpo to the area, trying to dink it in. It's deflected away and then hammered high up into the air by Hien out of play for a throw to Liverpool there's a great nervousness about the way that Atalanta are defending here Dean there is especially with those long passes from Van Dijk and Alexander Arnold it's causing problems for Atalanta with the narrow front three but again it was all a bit it was a bit intricate really wasn't it from Gakpo you know you're thinking a striker there edge of the box is he going to get it out of his feet and strike towards goal he's tried to poke one forwards got to try and make use of those good positions that they find themselves in Liverpool and Klopp as ever very demonstrative on the near side touchline and continuing to issue instructions and Jim Seaty will play the ball back to 
Goalkeeper Musso and Atalanta can build from right to left. Musso high ball over the halfway line. Van Dijk contesting it with Miranchuk, who's managed to poke it back into his own half to the feet of Darone. In the 38th minute now, and here is Ruggieri for Atalanta. Ball forward about 15 yards into the Liverpool half, but McCannis is there to beat Skamaka to it, and now Alexander Arnold is racing forward in red for Liverpool. To his right is Saboslai, maybe not quite on the same wavelength as Alexander Arnold, who looks determined to make things happen, and eventually the ball is out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, it's his first poor pass, Alexander Arnold. It was a, a good bit of defensive work from McAllister setting him away. And he just overhit it towards the Bosley. But again, Liverpool showing even more positive signs. They've got genuine control of this game. You can hear the Liverpool supporters and the Atlanta fans likewise. More live football coming up across the TalkSport network over the weekend. Lovely ball over the top by Gakpo. Mo Salah is clear. He's lobbed the goalkeeper, but he's stuck it five yards wide. And Salah, having scored the penalty to get Liverpool right back into the tie, could have made it 3-2 on aggregate there, but totally fluffed his lines. And it goes behind for a goal kick. And Liverpool's recent wastefulness in evidence again there. Honestly... Head in hands moment from Mo Salah. He's through 1v1. It's bouncing perfectly for him. The goalkeeper's stranded. All he's got to do is get the side foot onto this, lift it over the top of Musso. It doesn't even have to be perfect because it could go over the top of the goalkeeper, bounce once or twice and go into the back of the net. And he basically shanks the side foot wide. What a chance for Mo Salah and what a miss. We have had high drama in France tonight. Lille against Aston Villa finished three all on aggregate after extra time. It went to a penalty shootout and we can bring you news of the winning penalty now with your TalkSport 2 commentator, Alex Crook. He has to score to keep Lille in the Conference League. Andre against Martinez. Martinez saves it and does a victory dance in front of the Lille supporters. And for the first time in 42 years, Aston Villa are heading into a European semi-final in the most dramatic of circumstances. They have won the penalty shootout by four kicks to three. And Kermitis has scored for Atalanta! But the flag is up, and Liverpool get away with it here in northern Italy. Colt Miners clear inside the penalty area, rammed it past Addison, but Liverpool appear to have been saved by an offside flag. It looked very, very tight in the build-up after the slide rule passed through to him, but he was just in an offside position, and it's still 1-0 to Liverpool on the night here in the Europa League, and they trail 3-1 on aggregate. Well, it's a great pass, but it's right between Van Dijk and Canate, and I thought that just can't happen, surely. And actually, Canate has recognised at the last second that he needs to step up alongside his centre-back partner. Exactly what you should do when that ball goes backwards as a defender. You go up a couple of yards alongside your centre-back. He quickly does that and catches Coke Miners offside. It was actually really good defending in the end from Liverpool, but a scare. So Aston Villa through to the Conference League semi-finals in dramatic fashion after a 4-3 penalty shootout victory in Lille. Emi Martinez, a penalty shootout hero, again the Argentine World Cup winner. And live now on TalkSport 2 will be at London Stadium. West Ham lead Bayer Leverkusen by a goal to nil in the Europa League. But they're 2-1 down on aggregate, David Moyes' team. There'll be full commentary from now on TalkSport 2. So make sure you stick with the network for what is going to be a dramatic rest of the evening in European competition here. Mo Salah has given Liverpool on the, the lead on the night from the penalty spot against Atalanta with three minutes of the first half to go. And Salah's trying to clip it through the middle towards Diaz. They want handball against Tien. It was handball. That'll be a yellow card for the Swedish centre-half and a free kick to Liverpool. What? 30 yards or so out here, Dean. Well, the Liverpool players are asking, why is this not a red card? They feel as if Luis Diaz would be through on goal for a goal-scoring opportunity. 
Hien knows exactly what he's doing. He leads across with his left arm and stops Luis Diaz from going through 1v1 with the goalkeeper. It's just where the Jim City was round on the cover, which is a, a genuine possibility. And the referee has gone with a yellow card. But once again, it's shown, and Jurgen Klopp talked about this after the first leg, that they had their opportunities, Liverpool, to make the most when the Atalanta defenders step out to, uh, to mark their, their strikers as they go deep. There was spaces in behind. So far, they've utilised that a couple of times really well. None more so than Mo Salah, who should have scored. And so Diaz is booked for his protests and the decision of a yellow card for he end stands. I think you're right, Dean, because Jim Seaty was the covering defender. It's a Liverpool free kick, dead centre, and what, 10 yards or so from the edge of the penalty area? maybe 30 yards out in all, but possibly just about within shooting range. Liverpool a goal up on the night, they need at least two more. In fact, it's 12 yards from the edge of the 18-yard box here, and Alexander-Arnold has placed the ball very deliberately, and he seems to be really sizing this one up at the empty end of the stadium, away to our right-hand side. There are four in the Atalanta wall. Andy Robertson standing over it as well. Will it be the right foot or the left foot? Here comes Alexander-Arnold to hit it right-footed into the wall. It's come back out to Robertson. Robertson lays it square to Curtis Jones. He's got time to dink one in. Van Dijk let it run. Lit Diaz back to McAllister with a right-footed shot. That's blocked away. And then Alexander-Arnold completely miscues the rebound. An ugly slice high right-footed behind it away for a goal kick. Yeah, a competition for... The worst effort from, first of all, Alexander-Arnold from the free kick straight into the wall. Then when it was recycled out of the area, McAllister bobbles his into a defender and it comes out to Alexander-Arnold and he says, I'm going to win, and puts it high into the empty stand behind that goal. And what's coming up in terms of reaction tonight, the sports bar with Jamie Ahara and Jason Cundy, whatever happens this evening or what is already proving to be a dramatic night in Europe for English clubs. Aston Villa through to the semi-finals of the Europa Conference League and West Ham and Liverpool hoping to mount great comebacks tonight. Van Dijk has fouled, Miranchuk went right through the back of it. Free kick to Atalanta. And no further punishment, I don't think, for Van Dijk. Into two added minutes at the end of the first half. And of course, Liverpool have just got to make sure that they don't concede. At 1-0 at half-time, with two goals to get in the second half, we certainly wouldn't put it past Jurgen Klopp's side. Here is Kolasinac, scooping the ball up the inside left channel. The flick by Skamaka over the top and cleared away by the covering McAllister for Liverpool. A high ball towards the halfway line, and Gakpo's done well to beat Kolasinac in the air. He then comes across and thunders it out of play. Liverpool want to take the throw quickly, with Gakpo, 40 seconds into two added at the end of the first half and now it's a to the corner of the penalty area. There are two balls on the pitch as Atalanta cleared away and Jurgen Klopp wants the game stopped. Atalanta on the break with Miranchuk trying to burst beyond Canate. Canate does well to steady himself and see it back to Addison and the referee should have stopped the game there. Yeah, he should. I, don't, I just don't think he saw it, the referee. Too busy with the break from Atalanta. Canate once again showing 1v1. He's a really difficult defender to get past. He's able to handle that situation with ease in the end. And Liverpool back in Premier League action at the weekend, away at Fulham on Sunday. Two points behind the league lead is Manchester City, who will play in the FA Cup semi-final on Saturday against Chelsea at Wembley. We've got both FA Cup semi-finals live on Talk Sport this weekend. Coventry against Manchester United on Sunday. And Arsenal could go top of the Premier League by sun, uh, Saturday evening with a win at Wolves. That is live on Talk Sport, live and exclusive. A 7.30 kickoff on Saturday. And Sheffield United against Burnley, the two relegation candidates on Talk Sport 2 at 3. Good turn by Sanna on the halfway line for Liverpool. They're 3-1 down on aggregate against Atalanta. Alexander Arnold has won them a throw midway inside Atalanta territory. You just wonder whether Liverpool have had Alexander Arnold in this difficult period 
where the results might have been different as the referee blows the half-time whistle. Halfway through the second leg here in Bergamo and Liverpool still have it all to do that there really is increased hope now for Jurgen Klopp's side of a remarkable European comeback. Mo Salah with a very early penalty to give them the second leg advantage, drilling the ball beyond the goalkeeper after handball by Ruggieri from Alexander-Arnold's cross. Atalanta have rarely threatened their best opportunity when there were hearts in mouths for Liverpool fans. Cope Minish rammed it beyond Addison, but from an offside position, the goal was ruled out, and so at half-time in the quarter-final second leg, Atalanta nil, Liverpool won on the night, and Liverpool still trail 3-1 on aggregate. Premier League history has overturned a three-goal first leg deficit in the knockout. That was Valencia in the 2014 quarterfinals. Maybe, maybe, maybe Liverpool can add their names to that list. Nobody's ever done it away from home. They need a monumental second half. They still trail by two goals on aggregate. Over on TalkSport 2, by the way, West Ham lead by Leverkusen by a goal to nil on the night. They trail 2-1 on aggregate. Five minutes added on at the end of the first half, and we've just had a player down injured, so we'll come to the half-time whistle at the London Stadium very, very shortly. But Dean Ashton, perfect start from Liverpool to go in front after five minutes. How have they built after that goal? Because they'll be play pleased with the situation they find themselves in, but will they be really pleased with how they've played as well? I think they will be, because they've dominated the game. They've dominated possession, 70% of that. And in terms of attempts, you know, it's 8-1 to one in Liverpool's favour. I think the tempo's been terrific. I think they've utilised that space that they didn't in the home leg when one of the, the Atalanta defenders comes out of his position to, to come tight to one of the forwards. There is that space in behind. They've utilised that. They've looked to threat because of it. And really, really, they should be 2-0 ahead. You know, Mo Salah, you, you don't get an easier opportunity really than that as a, as a, a top-level elite forward player going through a nice height just to lift that over the goalkeeper um, and he made a real mess of it so that they should be 2-0 ahead really and mm. I think you'd be really pleased actually with the difference especially from last week they're in a really good position obviously the next goal in this tie absolutely massive Atalanta of course will want it to go their way but you feel like even though they would take the scoreline at this stage of the tie particularly going into it that fear has maybe crept into their play after that goal early on and they've retreated they're not the same side that you and I witnessed at Anfield last week no they're not and I think because of the the personnel change with Kolasinac and Maramchuk coming into the team they're not as big a threat on the counter-attack as they were last week at Anfield um, but it's the way that the manager's gone he's got that option to change if he needs to at any point but you're right they have regressed into their formation uh, but it's actually, it's actually when they have an attack that Liverpool look the most dangerous. That's when Liverpool have had their joy, which is um, surprising, really. I think they've struggled a little bit more when Atalanta have just sat in. So perhaps they should be a little bit more defensive more often, Atalanta. I also have to ask you about weather. And there was a big incident for me just before half-time. There should have been a red card against the Atalanta defender, high in it. It looked like he deliberately used his arm to block a pass that was rolling through for Luis Diaz, who would probably have taken the ball away and at least been in at goal. What did you make of that situation? Well, you're right. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's, he knows that Luis Diaz is away from him and he just puts his arm out to stop it. And, and he's taking a chance, hoping the referee, you know, takes pity in terms of Jim City being just across from him. But there's no way Jim City is catching Luis Diaz. He is away and going to be 1v1 with the goalkeeper. So it felt like a big decision and one that he and has definitely got away with. You could tell by his reaction straight away. He knew he'd, he'd done it uh, and probably feels a little bit lucky. And Liverpool can, rightly so, can say to the referee, well, that could easily have been a red card. Just finally, Dean, looking ahead to the second half, where will Liverpool find another gear here if they need to turn things up? Because, of course, they need two goals at least to take it two extra time so it needs to be a special second half performance nonetheless it does I think if they can maintain the levels that they have I think they'll create the chances it's just about whether they're going to be clinical enough you know you have to be almost perfect in a game like this to get a special result and so far they haven't been perfect because Mo Salah hasn't taken that opportunity so if for Nunez and 
and Jota come on then and the chances come their way you, they have to be more clinical than they have been in the last three or four games where they've been so wasteful been wasteful again tonight with a chance ultimately that will be what costs them because I think they'll create the chances tonight OK Dean big 45 minutes on the way out in Bergamo Liverpool looking back to their competent best in the second half they'll need to be at their brilliant best if they're to get past Atalanta and into the semi-finals of the Europa League that's exactly where West Ham United want to be they came into tonight trailing by Leverkusen by two goals to nil on aggregate they have reduced arrears. The half-time whistle has gone. Talk Sports, Ian Abrahams. West Ham won by Leverkusen. Nil. The goal on 13 minutes. Jared Bones ball in from the right-hand side with his left foot in swing for Mikel Antonio to get there first. He wanted it more than any of the Leverkusen defenders and the goalkeeper, and he powered home a header. Bowen unlucky not to add a second from a Kutis ball in. Left-hand side with his right foot again in swinging. Bone was five yards out. The goalkeeper blocked it on his line. He's also made a couple of other good saves, the keeper. And there was one chance just before half time when Antonio had a shot blocked. It fell to Alvarez edge of the area. His shot was then blocked by Antonio subsequently. And when it came to Soufal, his shot was saved. The only time Leverkusen have even attempted to get the ball past Fabianski in the West Ham goal. Nathan Teller early on from 25 yards out on his birthday. Fabianski to his right made a decent save. There was a kerfuffle during the half with the players and the coaching staff. One of each was sent off. Billy McKinley, the assistant manager of West Ham, he sat two rows behind us now, Hugh, for the second half. At the break, though, West Ham are halfway there. West Ham won by Leverkusen nil, 2-1 on aggregate. The whole of the second half is on Talk Sport 2. And it looks like Bayer Leverkusen will want to have a little bit more attacking intent in the second half because their 18-goal centre-forward, Victor Bonifaz, has come out to warm up with a fitness trainer as soon as the rest of the players went down the tunnel. So we should expect to see him at the beginning of the second half. Loads still to play for tonight. Everything hangs in the balance. Let's get the halftime odds with Ladbrokes. Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18-plus begambler.org. So Liverpool have reduced things uh, just to two goals. As I say, the need's going to be going to need to be absolutely on it in that second half. But they've made a good start to the evening. If Atalanta want to go on and win on the evening, reach the semi-finals tonight, 16 to one for them to do that. The draw is 11 to two. Liverpool to win now at one to six. These, of course, within 90 minutes. Okay, so it's to go on to win the match. Within 90 minutes, 16 to 1 for Atalanta. The draw, 11 to 2. Liverpool to win it is 1 to 6. On now, those are the halftime mods with Labricks. It's 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Odds update on Talksport with Labricks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. So just to run you through the halftime scores, then Atalanta nil, Liverpool one. Uh, Atalanta leading 3-1 on aggregate. It's goalless between Marseille and Benfica. Benfica 2-1 up on aggregate from the first leg. Roma look like they're just about there. They lead AC Milan 2-0 tonight. 3-0 on aggregate, as we mentioned. West Ham 1-0 up tonight. 2-1 behind on aggregate against Bayer Leverkusen. In the Europa Conference League, Aston Villa went through 4-3 on penalties a little bit earlier on. Lille had won the game at 2-1 on the night Fiorentina 2-0 on the night against Victoria Pilsen they are through and this evening Fenerbahce 1 Olympiacos 0 that's level 3 all on aggregate and POAK Salonica 0 Club Bruce 2 Bruce 3-0 up on aggregate a very busy night across Europe remember Liverpool won 5-0 on their last trip to Atalanta that included a 39 minute Diogo Jota hat-trick Will he come off the bench maybe to be their talisman and hero this evening? A big 45 minutes on the way. Stay with us here on TalkSport. Kick-off on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Attention, comrades. This spring, the world feels different now. A dystopian masterpiece. This is Big Brother. Becomes a reality. Time to finally do this. Winston! George Orwell's 1984, starring Andrew Garfield, Cynthia Erivo, Andrew Scott, and Tom Hardy. No, wait, stop. This is it. It's over already. Listen now. Subscription required. See audible.co.uk for terms. Sand is not appropriate. Shaking it is. Eating a bucket of KFC at your desk is not appropriate. Eating the new KFC lunch meal deal is. It's a Twister wrap, crisps, and drink from 549. 
workplace appropriate for when finger licking is not. Weekdays until 3 p.m. in store at participating restaurants only. See kfc.co.uk for full T's and C's. Switch to EE and get our fastest full fiber ever. Well, how fast is fast? Up to 1.6 gig fast. So I can live stream the match whilst I video chat with my friends. And I game all, all at the, the same, same time. time. That's right. All powered by BT with absolutely nothing to pay up front. What? Nothing. Not a thing. No wonder broadband switchers choose EE. Offer ends 25th of April. New customers, 32.5% UK availability. Terms apply. Not shopped at Ocado, but you've heard it's the best. Now you can shop for 25% less. And groceries delivered free to your address. There's an Ocado just for you. First time customer, get 25% off your grocery shop and free delivery. There's an Ocado just for you. New customers only. Minimum spend £60. Max saving £20. Geographical restrictions apply. Conditions at Ocado.com. Verify at info at OcadoRetail.com. On average, Rift get their customers three grand back. I'm like a rubber ball. I come down. Let's get the ball rolling. Search Rift Tax Refunds. Orbital Cosmic Tomcattery. Oculent Credence Comology. Operatic Consonance Trombonary. I've got it. Ocular Coffensive Totomography. I haven't got it. What is it anyway? Optical Coherence Tomography, an advanced eye health scan that can help spot sight conditions early. At Specsavers, we think it's so important, we're providing it nationwide. Octopus Coherence. I've got the giggles now. <laughs> Not everyone can say it, but everyone can have it. Add it to your eye test for an additional charge. Check your local store for availability and price. I'm Martin Samuel. I write a column for The Times and Sunday Times, and you can read my take on the weekend's football every Monday online or through our app. You'll also find the latest news and exclusive football features. Enjoy the game podcast, the football newsletter, and in-depth tactical analysis in the trend. A digital subscription is just £1 for three months. Subscribe with Google or visit thetimes.co.uk forward slash talksport to join. Auto news at £26 a month and let's cancel. Bet UK have got some mad offers. Like what? Free bets? Yeah, man. £30 in free bets when you bet £10. You're joking? Really? Yep. And even with a free bet, I still wouldn't back your team. Oh, whatever, mate. (laughs) Whatever you think, visit betuk.com or download the app to get your £30 in free bets. Bet UK. It's where the UK bets. New customers only. £10 minimum bet. Minimum odds and T&C supply. 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. Europa League live on Talk Sport with Village Hotels. With 33 locations across the UK, Village Hotels have everything under one roof for a great breakaway. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker. Oh, what a finish! The Europa League live on Talk Sport. You're listening to kick off on Talk Sport with Labricks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. It's 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. There is a lifeline for Liverpool after Mo Salah's penalty on seven minutes means they trail Atalanta 3 1 on aggregate, but expect them to throw the kitchen sink at this one. The second half coming up very, very shortly here on Talk Sport. Remember, over on Talk Sport 2. West Ham have a 1-0 lead on the night against Bayer Leverkusen, but they trail 2-1 on aggregate. Could be another grandstand finish for you. And we had one a little bit earlier on in the Europa Conference League as Aston Villa made it through to their first European semi-final since 1982, beating Lille 4-3 on penalties. You have to say they rode their luck on the evening, losing the game by two goals to one. It went down to a penalty shootout. Emi Martinez, after his penalty heroics in the World Cup final, was at it again. He saved two in the shootout. He got a second yellow card shown to him during that shootout. And we all thought, what's going on here? Isn't he off? Turns out that after 90 minutes, or after the extra time has ended, yellow cards are wiped, which means that the penalty shootout itself is almost a separate entity. So he was a very, very lucky boy indeed, albeit it was all within the rules. And he was the man of the moment for Aston Villa, who made it through. And look, hopefully we get another Premier League representative too. West Ham are giving it absolutely everything. As I mentioned, Liverpool will as well. And we could be right down to another late, late night here on TalkSport with all the reaction coming for you with the sports bar from the conclusion of events out in Bergamo. Let's head back to your commentary team. Uh, TalkSport's Joe Shannon is alongside the former England striker, Dean Ashton. 
And great to see the Liverpool fans high up in one corner of the Gavis Stadium, huddled together, lots of Liverpool flags and banners depicting Liverpool triumphs in Europe over years gone by. And of course, and Liverpool's greatest triumphs are reserved for the European Cup and the Champions League. But the Europa League is where it's at in Europe this season for Jurgen Klopp, his final season as manager. Of course, he'll leave in the summer and he wants to potentially depart with a treble. Who knows, that is still technically possible for Liverpool, though, of course, uh, that in part hinges on what they can do in the second half of the second leg here away at Atalanta. 3-1 down on aggregate Liverpool. Mo Salah has given them a second leg half-time lead from the penalty spot. Arguably, Salah should have scored again. Diaz has had one good opportunity as well. Atalanta have rarely threatened... There is a real belief, I'm sure, in the Liverpool camp that they can do it, Dean Ashton. They can, at the very least, force this game to extra time. Well, absolutely. I think they've shown in that first half that they can create the chances and should be 2-0 ahead, that's for sure. So they'll know that if they can be more clinical in the second half, there's no reason why they can't, at the very least, take it to extra time, albeit you still have that sense that Atalanta may have one or two chances themselves and you've just got to hope you can get through those moments if you're a, a Liverpool player we'll keep you up to date with West Ham's attempts at a comeback against Bayer Leverkusen 1-0 up at half time in the second leg at London Stadium 2-1 down on aggregate the whole of that game is live over on TalkSport 2 right now if you haven't got the app make sure you get hold of it it's free and easy to download you can swipe between both stations at your leisure we've got Premier League football Championship football both FA Cup semi-finals the Women's Champions League semi-final coming up this weekend across the TalkSport network the Sports Bar will take all your reaction and once we're done tonight but a long way still to go second half about to get underway in Northern Italy and Atalanta in their dark blue and black will kick us off again playing from left to right Liverpool all in red attacking the northern end of the stadium that is full with Atalanta supporters no changes at half time as far as we can tell Aston Villa flying the flag for English clubs in Europe it would seem through to the Europa Conference League semi-finals and will Liverpool and West Ham keep alive their own European hopes in the Europa League as the second half begins here and Liverpool win the ball back from kick-off straight away Alexander Arnold will scoop it downfield and Hien is there to head it away for Atalanta Liverpool with Alisson in goal Alexander Arnold, Canate, Van Dijk and Robertson the back four McAllister, Jones and Sabosla in midfield Diaz, Salah and Gakpo up front Liverpool need two more at a minimum to take the tie to extra time Atalanta have uh, Musso in goal, Jim City, Hien and Kalasanac are the defenders, Zappa Costa and Ruggeri are the wing backs, Edison, Doron and Colt Miner in midfield, Skamaka and Miranchuk are the front two. I'll give you the Liverpool subs as soon as I get the opportunity, but here's Van Dyke sending the ball back to Addison, all in green away to our right hand side of this rather compact stadium, the Gavis Stadium holds about 16,000 or so at the moment and Liverpool dominated possession and territory in large part in the first half they kept the tempo high what they need to do now Dean Ashton is convert any chances that come their way well like I said in the first half what they have done is Luis Diaz and Mo Salah at times have been the two forward players with Gakpo then dropping in as a as a 10 to be that genuine threat in behind when they do get the ball Liverpool then they can go out wide as and when they need to but it's just about composure both in front of goal and defensively making sure they don't concede but also when these chances come along they have to take them and, and can they take it right towards the end of the game maybe get one back and then you bring on the likes of Jota and Nunez and, and then anything can happen and remember the away team in the second leg of a knockout situation like this, down by three or more goals after the first leg, have never in the history of the Europa League been able to turn that deficit around. Liverpool aiming to be the first tonight as Canate slides in on Skamaka 
and the ball is out of play for an Atalanta throw, 10 yards or so into Liverpool territory. The Liverpool bench, Gomez, Endo, Nunez, Adrian, the goalkeeper, Jota, Elliott, Dans, Clark, Kwanzaa, Gravenberg, Simikas, McConnell, and the second-choice goalkeeper, Kevin Kelleher. Liverpool perhaps smarting from that first-leg defeat last Thursday, but still with a prospect of a dramatic recovery. Atalanta have possession. Ruggieri, the former Atalanta youth team player, will take the throw on the far side of the left. It's intercepted by Alexis McAllister, but the loose ball has dropped to Edison, who pokes it on to Cope Minish, and his cross is turned behind by Ibrahima Kanate. Not quite the same dynamic opening to the second half for Liverpool as the first, and now they have a first Atalanta corner to defend. Atalanta 3-1 up on aggregate, live on Talk Sport. Yeah, well, Gasparini will want a little bit more control. It was totally dominated by Liverpool. They are at home. The first corner of the game in its entirety, taken short and whipped back in high by Miranchuk. Miles over here. Terrible effort with the ball on his left foot and it's ballooned out of play for a throw to Liverpool in the left-back position. And jogging across to take it with no great hurry is Liverpool's Andy Robertson sea of blue all around him as his throw finds Diaz midway inside his own half of the field then Robertson with a high raking ball up the middle the floodlights on and the skies are dark now Ruggieri for Atalanta has managed to find Skamaka good turn away from Alexis McAllister little tuck back by Cope Minish to the feet of Miranchuk wide to the near side and Zappa Costa much better this from Atalanta Zappa Costa's ball in Cope Minish can't get there and it's an opportunity for Edison who struck it with his right foot not enough power behind it easy save for Addison big let up for Liverpool yeah, it was almost a carbon copy of the first leg goal that Atalanta opened with from Skamaka Zappa Costa getting down the right hand side whipping a ball back towards the penalty spot Skamaka missed it and then when it was laid off to Edison he just couldn't quite get that either side of Allison. it was straight at the goalkeeper who just gathered easily Liverpool haven't really switched on at all at the start of the second half here. 1-0 up on the night, but that will not be enough. 3-1 down on aggregate here in the Europa League quarter-final. And of course, those gaps that do appear when Robertson and Alexander Arnold are out of position. They know they can attack those areas. The sports bar will take your calls once we're done with all of the European football tonight. 0-3-7-1-7. Double two, double three, double four. West Ham still trail 2 1 on aggregate to the German champions Bayer Leverkusen live over on Talk Sport 2. Liverpool with McAllister fouled surely by Cope Minish, and the referee does eventually blow for a Liverpool free kick. And Jones has gone to ground. In fact, it was Jones who was caught by Cope Minish in the middle of midfield, just stuck out a leg and trod on the uh, right foot of Curtis Jones who, like many Liverpool players, has had injury issues this season, and a mistake in the Atalanta back line. Goalkeeper and defender caught it a mess after a simple long ball forward, and in the end, Jim City was able to deflect it away from danger and get it away from the edge of the penalty area for Atalanta. Liverpool very nearly threatening out of almost nothing. Yeah, just a ball over the top, and the goalkeeper obviously called, but Jim City didn't hear the call. It hit him on the back of the head. He didn't really know much about it. Now De Rhone with an early ball in from the near side, the Atalanta right. That's easily gathered by Allison, who throws it out over arm to Alexander Arnold. We are six minutes into the second half in the second leg. Liverpool need at least two more. Alexander Arnold gets the return ball from Salah. Right hand edge of the penalty area. Across came Edison, and it's a Liverpool corner at that north end of the stadium. It is packed with Atalanta supporters. The first corner of the game for Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool in what could be his last European game in charge. Terrific run from Alexander-Arnold down the right-hand side and then underlapping Mo Salah with a 1-2, winning a corner. He's putting in a lot of effort, Alexander-Arnold. Can he play the full 90 and more, or is he only going to be able to give 60, 70 minutes? Canate and Van Dijk both forward, whipped in by Alexander Arnold, headed away by Atalanta, up to the midway point of their own half, and Sabosla with a sweeping ball, out to the right again, chested down by Alexander Arnold, ball in with the outside of his foot, blocked off by Edison, who scrambles it clear, the defensive midfielder for Atalanta, up and over the halfway line. Liverpool win possession back. This is better from Liverpool. 
who are two points off the top in the Premier League. There is still the faint prospect of a what would be a fine treble, but it will take some turnaround to achieve it. Arsenal can go top of the Premier League on Saturday evening if they win away at Wolves. That'll be live on Talk Sport on the same day. Manchester City against Chelsea in the first of the FA Cup semi-finals at Wembley. The second is on Sunday, Coventry City against Manchester United. Both are on Talk Sport. Here is McAllister shepherding the ball back to Allison, the Liverpool goalkeeper. Allison almost gets himself in a tangle, plays it square to Van Dijk, safety first clearance, upfield from Van Dijk. Allison nearly caught in two minds there under pressure. Now McAllister on the far side, the right to Salah. Ten yards into opposition territory. Lovely little touch back by Savoslai. Little back heel to find Jones, who bursts beyond the challenge of Darone. Out wide to Salah and back in field now to McAllister. Square ball to Alexander Arnold. They look a little more well drilled in this second half defensively. Atalanta and sitting quite deep and allowing Liverpool to attack towards them now. Gakpo's ball in field, poked out wide by Saboslai. Diaz with a back heel to keep it in on the dead ball line. Cody Gakpo corner of the penalty area, deflected cross. That's going to be easy for Musso to gather. Nobody in red anticipated that cross. No, but you've got to anticipate that. When Gakpo and Luis Diaz are out wide, that's where Saboslai and Jones have to make it their job to get into the penalty area. That's where the likes of Gina van Alden was so good in that midfield area. So Aston Villa through to a first major European semi-final since 1982 after a penalty shootout victory in Lille. 4-3 on penalty kicks. It was live on Talk Sport 2. West Ham still trailed by Leverkusen 2-1 on aggregate. Liverpool 3-1 down on aggregate away at Atalanta. Nearly 10 minutes into the second half now. Diaz in the second leg has won it back off Jim Seaty. Left hand edge of the penalty area, Diaz. He lodges it square to Jones. Jones finds Salah with his back to goal, surrounded by blue shirts. Wriggles away and manages to poke it wide to Diaz. Diaz shuffles in field, blocked off by Darone, surely. But no free kick given by the referee, the Texia. And Liverpool open mouth really in the direction of the referee who's got all of the key decisions right apart from that one Dean Ashton as Alexander Arnold floats it brilliantly long for Gakpo the flag has stayed down Gakpo back to goal he's laid it off to Saboslai back to Gakpo little flick Salah's in saved by the goalkeeper it's come out to Andy Robertson now Robertson from the angle deep to the back post and now the flag does eventually belatedly go up and Salah missed another glorious opportunity, but he might have been offside anyway, Dean Ashton. Oh, that pass in towards Gakpo, who was through, was just a fraction too high. He controlled it with his head in the end, and then it got to Sabozla. He really should have taken it out of his feet and had the shot. Instead, he laid it back towards Gakpo. Then Croy flicked it to Salah, who was offside, and then he missed the chance, and it was all a bit of a mess in the end. If only Gakpo could have just cushioned that into his own path he would have been through again, but that is the danger for Atalanta. It's just that one ball over the top for the Liverpool pace. FC Halifax Town 1, Oldham 2 in the National League. In the Europa League quarter-finals, uh, Benfica are 2-1 up on aggregate against Marseille. Goalless in the second leg. The winner of this game, Atalanta against Liverpool, will play the winner of that tie in the semi-finals. Uh, Roma 3-0 up on aggregate against Milan Roma down to 10 men in the second leg but that doesn't appear to be having too much of an effect on them West Ham 2-1 down on aggregate to Bayer Leverkusen in the quarter-finals of the Europa League here's McAllister for Liverpool 10 yards shy of the halfway line Liverpool have got to be sharp with their finishing they are 34 minutes or so away from Europa League elimination as it stands. They need two more goals at least. Here's Gakpo, 10 yards shy of the edge of the penalty area, trying to smuggle it wide left. Cleared up field by Jim Seti. Kanate has beaten Skamaka, not once, but twice as Van Dijk wins the header on halfway. Skamaka actually caught Kanate, perhaps with a flailing arm. The referee gives Liverpool the free kick, and I think Sensabee again. There's no further punishment. Yeah, Skamaka just really leans in with his elbow into uh, into the ribs of Konate. And then Van Dijk comes and helps him out and he clatters into Skamaka by winning the header as well. Now a foul by Kalasanac on Sabosla. 
and Atalanta's approach getting ever more dogged as this game goes on. It isn't pretty from Gasparini's team. That stunning result at Anfield in the first leg, but it's the Liverpool fans, 750 that you can hear singing now. Liverpool are enjoying again much of the possession and territory. Free kick is midway inside the Atalanta half. Atalanta trying to make this a spoiling encounter in the second leg. The free kick is right of centre, too far out for a shot. Dinked in by Alexander Arnold, Van Dijk with the header, and it's gathered into the chest of the goalkeeper. How often do we see him win those headers from set plays? Virgil van Dijk, he attacks it so well. Getting up, using that arm onto the back of the defender, Jim Citi, just to then try and guide the header. I don't think he was trying to score. I think he was just trying to lend that in towards Luis Diaz, who was trying to get in front of the goalkeeper, but just couldn't quite angle the header down. Halifax 2, Oldham 2 in the National League now. Equaliser for Halifax, though the draw wouldn't really do either team much good in the race for the playoffs. Talking of the playoffs, West Bromwich Albion ensconced in the playoff picture, away at automatic promotion chasing Leicester in the Championship on Saturday lunchtime. That's exclusively live on Talk Sport. What a season we've had in the EFL. And with the clock ticking on the season, the only place to be is the Talk Sport network. Blackburn against Sheffield Wednesday. Both teams scrapping for survival at the bottom end of that division, live on Sunday lunchtime on Talk Sport 2. Two cracking commentary matches for you from the EFL this weekend yet again. Header away by Atalanta and now Edison has hit the back of his own player, Jim Citi, but Kalasnach is able to recover, sends the ball to the right-back position and Zappa Costa, who slides clearances straight out of play. There's a clumsiness about Atalanta in this second leg and, of course, they're set up much more defensively, which is completely understandable. Can Liverpool carve them open at least twice and bring this tie level, Dina. Yeah, they've, they've looked edgy, haven't they, at times? Both defenders going for the same ball. Miscommunication between centre-back and goalkeeper at one moment. You know, a couple of times now, Liverpool players just going through, getting in behind the, the defence. But so far, they've got away with it. We've had just under an hour in the second leg beneath the floodlights here. This redeveloped stadium, the Gavis Stadium in Bergamo. Here come Atalanta with Zappa Costa charging down the near side of the right. Live with the edge of the penalty area. Jinx in field away from Curtis Jones. Lays it square to Kurt Minus. Good turn, good low shot. Well gathered by Addison to his left hand side. The Liverpool player on the edge of the box was turned far too easily by Kurt Minus, and it was excellent handling by Addison. But it was because of the pass from Zappa Costa. He's zipped in along this wet surface, and Kurt Minus first touch was wonderful and you don't want him on his left foot he's got a brilliant strike with that left foot of his but unfortunately for him the ball was slightly under his feet it meant all he could do was really dig it out the strike still struck it well but again straight at the goalkeeper Dean Ashton his old club West Ham are still fighting for a spot in the Europa League semis they are 2-1 down to Bayer Leverkusen in the second leg live on and Talk Sport 2 2-1 two down on aggregate I should say 1-0 up in the second leg against the German champions and Pardew, Dean's former boss part of our Talk Sport 2 commentary team tonight here is McAllister winning the ball back for Liverpool on halfway feeding Cody Gakpo sandwich in between two blue shirts to Rhone and he end doing up between them Gakpo stays down Liverpool meanwhile have to try and win it back through Jones and he does just that on the halfway line Moranchuk frustrated with the referee who I think again has been right to allow play to go on amid those two separate challenges Robertson flighted ball high up the middle headed away by Kolasinac only as far as Diaz and now Sano with his back to goal shrugged aside by the more physical presence of Kolasinac and now Moranchuk breaks over the halfway line for Atalanta only really Skamaka in support he gets the return ball from Edison there's Moranchuk and Edison looking to burst beyond McAllister who was fouled says the referee Edison by Alexis McAllister and that's a free kick to Atalanta about six yards from the edge of the penalty area now well I feel as if McAllister's done really well I think he's given a throw in actually I think yeah, it's just right. the way he pointed towards that with his arm slightly down the referee but McAllister's played that role well this evening he's covered when he's needed to yes you lose maybe a little bit of his creativity but he can play that role as well 
Liverpool is hoisted up towards Skamaka inside the penalty area, formerly of West Ham United. An injury hit sole season in East London. Atalanta have the ball back midway inside the Liverpool half. Lovely way to pass through to Davide Zappacosta, who kept his feet under the challenge of Van Dijk. A risky challenge inside the penalty area. Liverpool are able to clear through Alexander Arnold. A little dink up the middle, headed away by Hien into the 63rd minute now. And with Liverpool needing two more goals, I wonder whether Jurgen Klopp is thinking about possible substitutions. Now Kotlinas hugging that far side left touchline. The Atalanta fans are on their feet all around the stadium. It's back towards Skamaka, smuggled away by McAllister for Liverpool, who are slightly losing this physical battle in the game now. Ruggieri left in position, time to cross left-footed, well gathered by Addison, high above his head inside the six-sharp box. Yeah, it's becoming frantic, it's becoming open. Don't really think Liverpool mind that, they've just got to make the most of the openness. Oh, so Boslad made a great run up the inside right channel, but it didn't appear that Jones saw his run, he was in lots of empty space there, Saboslai, because Ruggieri was still coming back, the left wing back. Anyway, Liverpool have got it with Alexander Arnold, right wing position, he tried to ping it across with pace, headed away by Edison, that was a very flat delivery from Alexander Arnold. Liverpool lead by a goal to nil in the second leg, but they still trail on aggregate. Here's Mo Salah with his back to goal, the flag has stayed down, Saboslai tucks it square, can't find Luis Diaz, cleared away on the stretch by De Rowe. And now Van Dijk forward towards Diaz again. Maybe Liverpool just need an injection of something slightly different in this game. I'm thinking somebody like Diogo Jota, who is on the bench among the Liverpool subs. So Bosley is 35 yards from goal in a central position. Lays it square to Robertson. He's got Jones on the overlap. Here is Jones' corner of the area. Poor ball in field by Jones. Into the penalty area. Not sure who his target was. He end sweeps it away. It's a bit messy, a bit like the, the game itself. Neither team able to genuinely keep the ball in attacking areas to create a meaningful opportunity. But the way that the game is, it's, it's not like Atalanta are just sat, camped in their own half. They're making a real game of it. Because of that, it is open. We feel that there is going to be chances. It might be Nunez and Jota that come on to make the difference. We've also got Elliot as well that can that can come on or you can bring on Endo and put McAllister further forwards. Seen a lot of cup football this season, Elliot. As that flighted ball forward by Canate will drift through into the arms of the big goalkeeper Musso in his short sleeve yellow shirt. And now they break Atalanta with Skamaka dropping on to the halfway line and now darting forward and poking it down the middle towards Mirancho. He lays it left to Kotminer, who couldn't get it under control. Even though the angle was against him, that would have been a big chance. He's pulled it back to Ruggieri. Time and space to shoot. Blocked off by Alexis McAllister, who came across at the very last moment. Well, again, what a great opportunity for Atalanta, but the ball from Ramchuk, which just wasn't good enough towards Cope Miners. And look, the surface is so slick. If your pass isn't perfect, it does just skip away. It's firm, it's fast. It really does test you. Yes, a slippery surface here, and with 25 minutes to go, 3-1 down on aggregate, Liverpool are going to make a triple change. Off comes Luis Diaz, and Jota, we mentioned, is the replacement. Diego Jota, not scored since February the 10th, he has had a recent spell out due to injury. And Nunez and Elliot are both going to come on as well for Liverpool. And is it the front three coming off in its entirety? Because Salah, having scored the penalty on the night for Liverpool, but having also missed one big opportunity, is leaving the field. And Saboslai is the other Liverpool man to come off. So two of the front three substituted Dean Ashton, and it's Jota, Elliot, and Nunez all on. I mean, look, I'm, I'm amazed it's Mohamed Salah because I just think. If you want anyone on the pitch, it's him because of his goal-scoring record. So that does surprise me that he's gone off. It doesn't surprise me that Klopp has made the three changes with Elliot going by the looks of things over to the right. Jota will play alongside Nunez through the middle with Gakpo coming over to this left-hand side. And Atalanta, meanwhile, possibly readying changes themselves. We're heading towards the final quarter of the game and the final 23 minutes potentially in the tie unless Liverpool can score at least two more goals here more European football to come for you on Saturday lunchtime 
on Talk Sport 2, the first leg of the women's Champions League semi final. Chelsea, whose manager Emma Hayes is leaving at the end of the season, away at the great Barcelona side. Here is Jones for Liverpool, scampering over the halfway line, lays it inside left channel to Darwin Nunez. Jota is in the middle, Nunez infield, onto his right foot, edge of the penalty area, took one too many touches, and there were enough. Three in the end, blue shirts converging upon Nunez to win it back. And now a great bit of skill by Zappa Costa to juggle the ball over the head of Robertson. And now he's darted 40 yards down the near side of the right, back to Skamaka, who hits it over the top, first time right-footed. And it's, by his standards, certainly in comparison to the first leg, a very presentable opportunity. Wasn't that wonderful from... Zappa Costa, lovely chest and flick over Robertson, driving down the right-hand side. He's got a really good understanding with Skamaka because of that goal in the first leg. Very similar as well there. Lovely bit of play, cutting it back into Skamaka, and he'll be disappointed. Not really under pressure from Canate. He just gets that horribly wrong, looking to whip across it and keep it low, and just spins it up and over the top. Zappa Costa, a Europa League winner with Chelsea. That final that you might remember against Arsenal in 2019. In Baku, I think it was, as Nunez holds the ball up for Liverpool midway inside opposition territory. Liverpool have been more subdued in attack in the second half, and Atalanta have been that little bit more resilient. And this is where that three-goal advantage they had from the first leg is such a precious one. Liverpool have cut that aggregate lead to two goals, but you can really see the advantage that Atalanta have got now, Dean Ashton. Yeah, maybe just a couple of tweaks from Gasparini at half-time has helped defensively for Atalanta. Here's an opportunity for Diogo Jota. Right-wing position for Liverpool, back to Canate. A sea of blue and black striped shirts ahead of Liverpool. Atalanta defending the edge of the 18-yard area. Liverpool playing from right to left. Cody Gakpo whips in the left-footed cross. It's overhit, but it reaches Alexander-Arnold at the back post. He tried to fizz it in on the half volley, but could only succeed in slicing the ball up into the air. It only went about three yards. Liverpool, in the end, have to go all the way back to goalkeeper Alisson. They have uh, three straight away games in the Premier League to come. Liverpool at Fulham, away at Everton, which is live on Talk Sport, and at West Ham as well. And then a home game against Tottenham, a trip to Aston Villa and a home game against Wolves to finish the season. Liverpool two points off the top of the Premier League. Joe Gomez stripped and ready to come on all in red very shortly. But it's the Atalanta fans who are singing because their team are heading through to what would be just a second ever a European semi-final for Atalanta. The last one they reached was the European Cup Winners' Cup semi-final in 87 88, so it's been over 35 years for the Atalanta fans, this renaissance they've had under recent years, They're under Gasparini. And Liverpool haven't really had enough of an answer in this second half. 20 minutes to go, one up on the night, 3-1 down on aggregate. You know what I said before the game to Hugh, you know, is this, is this team ready to mount a comeback in this game? You know, you've seen the likes of a Henderson driving the team from midfield. Who's the player that's going to drive this team now in the second half when players will be getting tired? They're not full of confidence from the last couple of games. Who is it that can try and grab the great game? West Ham 1-0 up on the night against Bayer Leverkusen, but still 2-1 down on aggregate to Xavi Alonso's Bundesliga winners. Haven't lost at all this season. Bayer Leverkusen, they might suffer their first defeat of the campaign and still go through, pumped long by Robertson high upfield, Nunez was never going to get there, blocked off by the retreating Edison who's done his defensive midfield work very diligently so far easy for Musso to gather and Musso, the goalkeeper has been very well protected in this second half, Aston Villa through to the Europa Conference League semi-finals you heard that on Talk Sport 2 earlier after a dramatic penalty shootout win in Lille. And let's get the latest from the second half of the second leg at London Stadium with Talk Sports Ian Abraham. 20 minutes to go, West Ham won by Leverkusen nil. The second half, Jared Burns had a ball across the six yard box, nobody there though. And Leverkusen through Frimpon had a shot saved at the near post by Fabianski. 2 1 non aggregate, the Germans lead. It's live on Talk Sport 2, it's on a knife edge. West Ham won by Leverkusen nil. Yes, make sure you download our app if you haven't already. We've got more live football on the network than anywhere else. 
And indeed, more than 60 games in the month of April alone. This is one of them. Liverpool have made another change. They're fourth of the game. Off goes Alexander-Arnold. On comes Joe Gomez, Dean Ashton, with 18 minutes left. Of course, I'm sure Jurgen Klopp would have loved to have kept Alexander-Arnold on for longer, but he is coming back from that knee injury and ultimately still building his minutes and there's still some very important games to come in the Premier League. You don't want to risk players ultimately, but Gomez coming on and Jurgen Klopp just wants to try and tweak the system. I think he wants Jota to go up there with Nunez and maybe go to a, a more of a 4-4-2 with Elliot on the right, Gakpo on the left. Defiant chance of some of the Liverpool fans the several hundred who are in the stadium tonight but Liverpool's European hopes of recovery are fading away now as Canate sends the ball skywards into touch it's an Atalanta throw no great threat to the Atalanta goal whatsoever at the moment you have to say they look comfortable and they're going to make a double substitution with two of the key players from the first leg Mario Pasalic who scored the third goal at Anfield and De Ketelaer about to come on Musso hacks the ball out of play into touch the goalkeeper after a long ball downfield and it's a Liverpool throw about 10 yards into opposition territory away on the far side the right as we look at it well I think Gasparini must be thinking obviously as it gets later in the game as well Liverpool will have to throw players forward to try and at least get that second goal and then the gaps might open up and that's where the likes of Pasalic and Kendier were so superb in the first leg off goes Skamaka who has been in fine goal scoring form of late and his two goals at Anfield so crucial in the context of this tie and Charles de Ketelaer the Belgian on loan from Milan will be his replacement and in fact it's uh, the two players de Ketelaer and Pasalic who started in the first leg who were replaced for the start of the second who are now coming on and uh, Pasalic the number eight will replace uh, Edison who's, who's done a very good job in the second half in midfield almost a low key atmosphere in Bergamo there's uh, perhaps affected by the relatively small numbers in the stadium tonight but for Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp European football together Klopp at Liverpool might only have 15 minutes plus added time left here live on Talk Sport 3-1 down on aggregate to Atlanta forward by McAllister to Harvey Elliott Liverpool needs some inspiration now as Jota misses his kick big swing and a miss and Hien will dink the ball over the top for Atlanta that gets Canate on the turn he's beaten to it by De Ketelaer De Ketelaer down by the dead ball line cuts it back needing to cope minus the angle is against him Hope Miners tried to dig it across towards the feet of Miranchuk, but Van Dijk did enough to block him off, and it's a goal kick to Liverpool. Yeah, different, different problem for Liverpool. Le Ketelaer, lovely little run in behind, got a little bit more pace than Skamakaru, looks to hold it up. Ran off the back of Konate and the reverse ball into Hope Miners, and then again Virgil Van Dijk coming across, and he's just so strong physically pushed him aside going to speed and mobility as you say Dean in the Atlanta attack now Jürgen Klopp in that retro looking jacket has hardly left his position as always on the edge of the technical area Van Dijk's ball down the middle towards Nunez is cut out by the retreating Hien and now Atlanta have it with Cope Minish midway inside his own half of the field Liverpool's attacks are more hopeful than expectant at the moment you feel in the game 77 minutes gone in the second leg and they're 1-0 up on the night Liverpool but 3-0 down on 3-1 uh, down on aggregate here's Andy Robertson midway inside Atlanta territory back to the halfway line and McAllister now Van Dijk's quick ball to the centre circle and Jones McAllister skips beyond the challenge of Cope Minish and lays it wide to the near side and Robertson McAllister was caught there by the late tackle of the Dutchman Cope Minish so that's a yellow card. He is highly thought of throughout Europe. Turn Cope Minish and a lot of links with a potential move away. Some in the Italian media were speculating that he wouldn't start tonight, but that turned out not to be true. It was a, a poor late tackle on McAllister, actually. 
it's been not really been in keeping with the game has it it hasn't been that type of two-legged affair between the two sides but Minus just sliding in late Andy Robertson's free kick for Liverpool left wing position high to the far post and that is too easy for the goalkeeper Musso to grab out of the air it was a floated delivery from Robertson with no real pace on it and it just looped up easily for the goalkeeper together they're just lacking that bit of quality unbelievably Liverpool in the, in the final third especially in this half they've not been able to get a sustained period of pressure against the Atalanta goal you're right it's been pretty hopeful hasn't it with the balls forward in this second half just looking for that one ball over the top and such great adventures for Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp in Europe over the years that sixth European Cup triumph in 2019 and runners up in the Europa League in his first season at the club 2015-2016 but Liverpool looks set to go out of the competition at the quarter-final stage this year barring at least two goals in the last 11 and a half minutes plus added time Jota upset with the assistant referee I think he's been flagged offside either way it's a free kick to Atalanta now and Atalanta doing a very effective job at stopping the rhythm of the game I think Liverpool are going to bring on Jaden Dans in just a moment the youngster who we saw first come onto the scene as part of that incredibly youthful side that won the League Cup for Liverpool and he scored his first senior goals in the FA Cup against Southampton meanwhile Adamola Lookman remember him former Everton man also ex Leicester and Fulham has taken to the field and it's Emir Rancher who goes off for Atalanta meanwhile Dans is now onto the pitch for Liverpool and they've taken off Andy Robertson and this is where I think Dean Ashton Liverpool just throw everything at it really yeah I don't think Cody Gakpo's a left back that's for sure <laughs> but he's currently <laughs> that's where he is at the moment he's, he's currently in the, the closest one to that vicinity um Jane Dan's coming on, if anyone hasn't seen it, his goal against Manchester United recently for the youth side is absolutely outrageous back heel and he's got the confidence of obviously playing and being part of the team that won the Carabao Cup. But it's a big ask, but why not? Why not dream as a young player? Can he be the hero? Very much a teenager, Liverpool's young prodigy, Jaden Dan's. He's been outstanding in the very few senior first team opportunities that he's had across the season still just 18 years of age a big goal for Marseille against Benfica in the second leg Marseille won Benfica nil in the Europa League two all on aggregate and that's significant because the winners of this tie will play the winners of that one in the last four it looks like Liverpool won't be there as it stands Atalanta 3-1 ahead on aggregate and Liverpool not really posing any threat to the Italian side's goal live on Talk Sport. Gasparini still issuing instructions for Atalanta and his stock will only continue to rise if he's able to steer them into the semis tonight. Well, again, Liverpool will, build from the back. He will have shown that he can adapt his team to, to play in a different way. Looking at the situation of the game, and we're kind of now waiting for this Liverpool onslaught that simply isn't arriving. The changes haven't really helped Liverpool very much so that's not to argue that the changes shouldn't have been made Atalanta have just made the game much more difficult for Liverpool in the second half it has been quite a spoiling style of play and that's understandable from the Italian team 0371722344 for the sports bar once we're done tonight on Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2 where West Ham despite a valiant effort against Bayer Leverkusen look like they might be heading out as well they're 2-1 down an aggregate West Ham Diogo Jota's ball infield towards the underlapping run of Gomez cleared away by Ruggieri what a night for Aston Villa through to the Conference League semis after beating Lille on penalty kicks Emi Martinez the hero once again in a penalty shootout and he was winding up the Lille fans as well here's Canate for Liverpool as it stands it'll only be Aston Villa with European interest left as all the rest of the English clubs look like they're going to go out this week. Four from five would go out if you include Arsenal and Manchester City, of course, in the Champions League yesterday. 
what Gasparini has now said to his, his side is we are man on man there's no tactical shape it is you have got your man and you stay with them and this is what they did in the first leg and it makes it really difficult then for Liverpool to play through you know Van Dijk's getting it with under pressure so is McAllister they just cannot seem to get that ball into the forwards Liverpool had chances in the first half they could have scored three in the first half as it is they have only managed one on the night 3-1 down on aggregate Salah had one glorious opportunity Dean when put through through the middle and Liverpool's wastefulness has cost them on numerous occasions in key matches in recent times in the season ultimately it looks like it could well be the case again tonight well because then that usual pressure builds from Liverpool when they do take their their chances otherwise it then gives the opposition more confidence scoop forward by Pasalic for Atlanta towards Adamola Lukman who's got great tremendous pace as we've seen in the Premier League in his fleeting appearances there before Van Dijk got it away initially now Gakpo in the left back position as you say Dean is fouled by Cope Minish. that's a free kick to Liverpool who are rapidly running out of time only six and a half minutes of normal time plus additional added between them and Europa League elimination yeah, there's no doubt Cody Gakpo at left back just looks strange. I don't think that's what Klopp is trying to do. In fact, no, he's Gakpo's been sent he, forward exactly, now. He's now gone up. I think they're looking more to to play Van Dijk and Konate with McAllister just between them almost to try and get the ball out. And how can Liverpool recover from the disappointment potentially if it is to be ultimately not enough tonight? They've got to score twice in the space of six minutes plus added time to keep their hopes alive Van Dijk has prodded the ball over halfway the boos and whistles of the Atalanta supporters as Jota goes down right in front of the head coach Gasparini the man who has changed everything at Atalanta taken them from regular relegation candidates to the top end of Serie A and European competition he is an honorary citizen of Bergamo now Gasparini that's how much they love him in this relatively small northern Italian city Van Dijk's ball back to Alisson he had to control that with his head no real problem for Alisson though here's Gomez, five minutes of normal time left Gomez up the far side right touchline Nunez has beaten Kolasinac to it Kolasinac gets across with a good challenge he's been excellent in the second leg Kolasinac with that trademark physicality broad shoulders, barrel chested Kolasinac and that's helped Atlanta retreat in the second half Liverpool with Jaden Dans on the corner of the penalty area 3-1 down on aggregate here's McAllister back to Van Dijk in the centre circle he's just played it square to the near side and Gakpo no way through for the team in red playing from right to left Gakpo trying to smuggle it beyond Zappa Costa but he can't do it Jones back in field now McAllister is 40 yards out dead centre square to Canate Canate touches it on to Harvey Elliott left footed deflected cross loops up into the air and gathered without any great fuss by the goalkeeper Musso who then goes down and holds onto the ball wastes away a few seconds Jurgen Klopp is sitting down on the edge of his technical area and pondering the potential disappointment of Liverpool's European dream in his final season potentially coming to an end very shortly yeah it just hasn't happened really for Liverpool so far anyway and even there you know when it feels like it's maybe not your night the cross put in from Elliot takes a, a flick off the defender's toe and goes right into the arms of the goalkeeper but they haven't it's not like they've got it wide very often Liverpool and flash crosses in for anybody to attack there's been a lot of play in front of Atalanta credit to them they've defended very well in the second half and shot at has won Liverpool a throw but it's in their left back position the opposite end of the field where they need the ball to be we're in the 87th minute now Atalanta trail 1-0 on the night but they're very comfortable with their 3-1 aggregate lead at the moment here is Dans lip of the centre circle but inside his own half back to Canate Liverpool whose prospects of a comeback look so promising when Mo Salah gave them the early lead from the penalty spot after just seven minutes then it really felt like 
almost as though Liverpool had the momentum, almost as though they were favourites to come back and win the tie. But that momentum hasn't come with them at all, really, in the second half, Dean Ashton. Well, I think, again, you know, credit to Gasparini and his team of defended very well in the second half Jurgen Klopp's having to make changes because of players coming back from injury they haven't got any flow they haven't really got any confidence have they from previous games either coming into this game and they found it a little bit sticky in this second half it's all been played. Van Dijk McAllister and Canati and Allison. they've just been playing the ball between each other for the it feels like the last five minutes. Given away by Canate. Straight to Ruggieri in the left-back position. He's lofted it downfield straight back to the chest of the Liverpool centre-half. Canate with the long legs. And it looks like it'll be Atalanta, whose fans are waving their flags and scarves in the stands. We're going to play either Marseille or Benfica in the semi-finals. Two all on aggregate there. At London Stadium, West Ham lead by Leverkusen, one in on the night, but they're still 2-1 down on aggregate. Long ball downfield by Allison for Liverpool, much too long for Jaden Dans, easy for Musso. And Liverpool in the tie, do look almost a beaten team now. It is hard to see such a late route back when they have to score at least twice. Yeah, can't remember a chance certainly in the last 20 minutes that Liverpool have created it's been pretty easy in the end for Atalanta just got to keep pushing if you Liverpool keep hoping Jones centre circle ball up the middle with the outside of his foot is dealt with by Jim Seating as soon as Atalanta clear the ball they sort of retreat as a collective back into their own half and invite Liverpool onto them so far Liverpool haven't had the guile to score the two goals that they've got to in this second half we're into the final minute of normal time and Harvey Elliott's giving it away and the ever-energetic Zappa Costa will burst down the right and Lookman's made the run ahead of it. Lookman down by the corner of the penalty area. He's turned away from McAllister, edge of the penalty area, gets the return ball. Lookman the angle tight, Van Dijk came across at the vital moment. Back out wide to Zappa Costa again. The Italians are 3-1 up on aggregate here and it's Coke Miners to pull it back to the dead ball line. He'll win a corner off Virgil van Dijk. Zappa Costa seemingly tireless, much like the whole of the Atlanta team, over the two legs. I think by the first half tonight, Atlanta have been the better team. Yeah, they've coped with the two legs extremely well against such a, a great team in Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp. And I think Gasparini's outsmarted Klopp over the two legs, you'd have to say, in terms of tactically, he's got it absolutely spot on. Coke Miners now, bursting into the box, the angle is tight, trying to play it back across, deflected away by Canate. Only three added minutes here for Liverpool, and they must score two goals. And the ball is down by the corner flag, it's a Liverpool throw, but they're surely going to run out of time. Gasparini has started his stopwatch, and Atalanta are ready to celebrate a very famous two-legged victory here. It would have to be, you have to say the greatest European result in all of Atlanta's history. Here's Diogo Jota charging over the halfway line for Liverpool. He's right down the middle, but he's blocked off. And there was a foul in there. Yellow card out of the pocket of the referee. Meanwhile, goal at London Stadium. Which way in Abrahams? A minute to go. West Ham won by Leverkusen won. The German champions have equalised. It's the half-time substitute Frimpon who's scored. He's wasted one amazing chance. This one he didn't. He buried in the back of the net. No chance for Fabianski, and West Ham are heading out. West Ham won by Leverkusen, won 3-1 to the Germans on aggregate, and it's alive on Talk Sport 2. Closing stage is there, West Ham heading out, Liverpool heading out. 3-1 down on aggregate, McAllister's free kick, Nunez with the header, and it's gathered easily by the goalkeeper. A little flick from Darwin Nunez with his back to goal, and that surely will be one of the last opportunities, if any, for Liverpool. Nunez with a faint touch, but Musso has simply not been tested enough in the second half. No, when it's a straight ball like that, to get the power on the header when you're trying to head it backwards, very, very difficult. He might have been better just heading that upwards and try and keep it alive, but it just feels like there's not enough time. And you've got to be honest, they've not deserved it, Liverpool not been good enough over the two legs minute to go here in the tie Liverpool desperately hack it long Van Dijk is playing as a centre forward now 
and cleared away by Zappa Costa for Atlanta. Header out of play by Curtis Jones, and that surely is just about that. Goal back for Milan at Roma, though Roma still 3-1 up on aggregate and heading for the Europa League semi-finals where it looks as though they're certain to play the German champions by Leverkusen. Atalanta here, sheer joy and jubilation among 15,000 supporters. 30 seconds left, offside against Lukman, but Liverpool ultimately started the second leg brilliantly. Salah from the penalty spot, a deserved lead, then they had chances. Diaz and Salah and Liverpool ultimately didn't make the most of them.